Hallelujah. Don't we like to hear what God is doing? Amen. Praise God. Tell me your name. Julia. Julia. Okay, so what happened with you? Um, I was having these horrible nightmares that were continuing on, the things that the demons were going to do to me and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was really full of fear and anxiety and all that stuff and racing thoughts and all that. And I came in last week and got prayed for and... Um, uh, Rick prayed for me, and the racing thoughts stopped, and I was I'm able to think clearly again. Wait, and huh, huh, huh. did y'all hear that? Did you hear that? How long has that been going on? For a long time. A long time. Did you yeah. hear what God just did? Can we celebrate the Lord for what He just did? Yeah. Okay. What else? This is this is not the end. What else happened? And then when I got here last night, I was really still pretty messed up, although my mind was clearing okay. um, with the fear and everything, and um, Kelly prayed for me before the meeting last night. And, turbo Kelly? And, turbo Kelly? Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, if I was, I was having a lot of trouble with, with her praying for me because okay. of the fear and everything, and the way she was treating me and the things she was saying helped relieve some of the guilt that I was going through, mm -hmm. and um, and she prayed for my heart to open and, and the Lord to to give me some of His love so I could feel it, and um, then I was prayed for last night by Cor uh, Karina, Karina, and uh -huh. um, she helped move some stuff out of my heart that has been there for a long time, and uh, my heart felt lighter, and then I got that touch from God. So. Yeah. And last night was the first night in a long time, no nightmares. <laughs> Praise God. She said last night was the first night with no nightmares. So that just goes to show you it's possible. If you've been living with nightmares, it's possible to be set free. Hallelujah. We serve a God who's no respecter of persons. He's the same yesterday, today, and he's going to be the same tomorrow. What he did for her, he will also do for you tonight. If you agree, the Bible says to agree, anything we ask in his name, he would do. You got something else? Come. What did you The fear and anxiety went down too. Woo! Hallelujah! So, let me just share something about the Arizona Deliverance Center. We believe in multiple people praying for you if necessary. So, if it takes five of us to pray for you, for you to get free, we don't mind five of us praying for you. So, don't feel like because one person prays for you that nobody else can pray for you. So, if you want another person to pray for you, that you know, another person will pray for you here as well, okay? So, you can make a commitment. I'm not leaving. Tell them, I'm not leaving until I get set free. You hear me? Be like the woman with the issue of blood. If you make the decision, I'm not leaving until I get set free. I promise you, we're going to make sure you get set free. Because we're going home. Amen? All right, so let's just say a prayer. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this amazing day. This is December 29th. We have two more days before 2017 is over. And Lord, we want to make this day count. We want to make sure, God, that whatever it is that you have given the man of God, that we have the ears to hear, the mind to receive, the heart to obey, and to say yes to you, God, at any point where we need to accept truth and deny lies. God, we thank you for this awesome man of God. We thank you, Lord, for what he's about to release tonight, God. We put a demand on it in the spirit, God, that you would bring forth, God, something that literally slaughters the deception that may be residing inside of us. Father, we give you permission by your spirit that your spirit would have its way inside of us. We say, come Holy Spirit and do whatever is necessary that we might walk in the fullness of what you intended for us. 
Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we bind every demonic spirit, God, that has exalted itself above the plan that you have for our lives. We bind witchcraft, God. We bind every spirit of doubt. We bind the spirit of fear right now in the name of Jesus and in every demon of destruction. We put you on notice right now that you have no authority to be operating in this place. We call forth the spirit of the living God to move in here from the top, the bottom, the north, south, and the east and the west. We give you permission to take over our lives and do whatever you feel is necessary that we might be set free tonight. We come into agreement with this place, God, that we will be set free, that we will not go home the same way we came. We are drawing a line in the sand tonight, God, that we say no more in the spirit, that when we come to this altar, we will be relentless in confessing the things that we need to confess, renouncing what we need to renounce, God, that we will not walk in the power of any generational curse that has come through our bloodline. We declare and decree by the word of God that we are set free according to John 10, 10. You said that I came, that you would have life and that you would have it more abundantly. And today, God, we receive the life that you intended for us when you died. And so we thank you, Lord. We say, have your way. Let your kingdom come and your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome the man of God. Testing one, two, three, four, five, six. How's that? All right. Tonight is a curse night. That doesn't mean you're to come here and start cursing. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't get carried away on it. Yeah, we're gonna get, we've got to get these curses from your family tree broken off of your family and your life because we can't afford to go into 2018 with any curses. Amen. Uh, once you get your curses broke off, uh, it doesn't mean you won't have any trials or tribulations. Everybody has that as a Christian, and they have that until they die. There's no way to get out of that. But you will, getting rid of the curses will allow you to become an overcomer and fulfill your destiny. And things will open up for you that have been blocked for years or months or whatever it's been. Okay? So it's, we're going to have a good night tonight. This uh, service is usually a really good one. Oops, I apologize for that. January 26th is the next seminar. That's not the title of it. Uh, tomorrow, as Vivian said, I'm having a hands-on training program, very casual. For We're going to try and uh, pick up some people to help us here at the Deliverance Center to help us expand our altar call. So I'll be here at noon tomorrow, and then it has no ending, so I'll be here as long as the thing goes. If it's two hours or six hours, whatever it is. So if you come late, we'll probably still be here, be my guess. Right? So it starts at noon. I uh, expanded my radio uh, ministry, and then I uh, changed it. So I'm on uh, Saturdays and Sundays now, in addition to Monday through Friday, okay? on 10, 10 a.m., uh, all the radio programs are always on the internet 24-7. SoundCloud.com has them. Don't forget about Rick uh, starting next Friday, the first Friday of every month. Rick's going to be here teaching and then have a blowout altar call. So that'll go really well. He does a fantastic job. Starting next year, he'll be here. Uh, if you can't come tomorrow, number our number one YouTube channel channel is the deliverance training channel so if you want to go through those 18 sessions you'll be basically ready to go for your healing and deliverance ministry that's assumed you've been called into that ministry or you want to do it you know there are a few additional things you need but if you feel that God's calling you in that area this will save you an incredible amount of time and energy and mistakes this will give you a heads up on the whole thing really quick okay those are our other YouTube channels our Thursday night meetings are always on our live stream channel Friday night is on our YouTube channel if you can't come tomorrow and uh, you know someone that needs deliverance I'll send them one of these healing and deliverance lists you just walk them through it one two three four like that 
and they can get delivered at your house or somewhere else, okay? If they don't want to come here. Some people are scared to come here. We've had people literally jump up and run out the door. Well, since we moved over here, we have these special locks. <laughs> so when somebody heads for the door, I've got this lock clicker, and I just click it, and they open it, boom, they run, and they fall down, and I never get sued because I just tell them they, they just slain the spirit. <laughs> send me an email, and I'll send you one of those lists, one for mentally ill Christians, one for troubled Christians. Be happy to do that. And remember, tomorrow your job is, if you don't, uh, if you have a church, church you go to, you set up a terror cell in your church. That's your mission field. Churches are not really houses of worship anymore. They're really sad, sick places for mentally and physically ill Christians. That's what basically what they are. Uh, I didn't, not totally, but uh, what you need to do is use your church as a mission field. It's what I did when I... Went, was at uh, my I went to a church in Scottsdale. It was a mega church, and I used it as a mission field. And I started picking off the sick people. I had more business I could handle. As soon as this spreads around that somebody got healed or delivered, it spreads around, and then you start getting referrals. And then the pastoral staff finds out, and you're shoot out of luck. <laughs> Yeah, you are thrown out the door. And they don't have locks on their door at mega church. Their things are wide open. They'll boot you right out the door. <laughs> but that's a blessing. That's God's sign for you. Start a new ministry. Thank you for your donations this year. The donation boxes are on the doors there. Thanks for your donations. Thanks for paying for all of our bills here. Every year I donate 100% of my salary to the ministry. My wife uh, works. Uh, I live off her, and <laughs> she only does it because of the incredible personality, and she ties to our ministry here. So again, we are not uh, asking you to make a sacrifice that we aren't making multiple times over. See, we're not a bunch of rot gut TV preachers here trying to steal your estate and milk money out of you and all that crap. Homie don't play that. This is a real deal here, and this is, a, you got to have some integrity to be in the ministry. That word's never been heard of before, but it's a new <laughs> word I made up, integrity in the ministry, which is an odd, difficult thing to find nowadays. Okay? Thank you for your donations. Your money's not wasted here, unless I make a mistake. <laughs> then I repent of it and apologize and keep going. Okay? I don't do everything perfect. You can donate on the website and the PayPal. Thank you very much. Okay, let's get going. Generational family curses. Let's start quickly. Now, you may notice there's weird things about your life. Things don't go wrong. Things sputter. Things seem to go well for a while. Then they collapse. It's kind of like, like a Flint Hills in Kansas, kind of a yo-yo thing. Feast, famine, relationship, divorce, relationship break. You have these strange things that for years have been occurring in your family, and it's just absolutely horrible. It's unbelievably bad. <clears throat> I got a personal friend of mine who has a curse on his life uh, for lawsuits. He has been in multiple lawsuits over the years, and in most of the cases, he has had the evidence to win it. Some of them have been slam dunk wins. And miraculously, he loses the lawsuits. Constantly losing them. Even when, he, when he, even when he wins a lawsuit, he can't collect. Does this make any sense? That's a curse. Okay. Do you have a curse if you do something wrong? No. Okay. You have to look at a pattern of activity. It's a pattern, not a one-time thing. Everybody, certainly me included, every one of us screw up. Everybody does that. Nobody's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody falls. Everybody sins. Everybody flops. 
everybody Nobody's ever challenged me on that because I know I'll embarrass them in public Nobody's that stupid challenge me on it It's just simply true. It's called humanity Human beings is what it's called That doesn't mean you're cursed everybody has that that doesn't mean there's a curse on you but if you notice a pattern in your family tree of divorces drugs crime Losing lawsuits different things you have to go back in Time there you will see something happened in that family tree Somebody was doing some nasty sinning Somebody opened doors bad doors really bad ones or it was a witchcraft thing or something like that something in the family tree clicked in here and then went down like that Okay You say well Jesus Christ became a curse for us That's correct. He did Galatians Jesus Christ became sin for us. That's correct. He did However, that won't do you any good whatsoever It doesn't do anybody any good at all nothing. It's worthless unless it's applied the blood of Christ is useless to you and will not help you and is like nothing to you unless you apply mm -hmm. the blood mm -hmm. to your life right. you can't get your sins forgiven unless you apply the gospel to your life you can't get the curses broken off unless you apply the curse God and why you don't automatically get healed after you get saved. You have to apply the atonement for healing to your body, generating your faith and trust and belief in God's word. Bang, you get healed. You have to, uh, the gospel has staggering levels of, embe of embellishments and investments and benefits, but you have to apply them. Otherwise, the gospel is totally and completely worthless. Yeah, Jesus Christ died for the sin of the world. Incredible. He died for all the curses of the world. Incredible. He died for all the sick people in the world. Amazing. Everything he did was unbelievable off the hook. But it's useless to us unless we apply it. Why did I say that? Because I heard your arguments. I've heard it for years. Oh, all the curses are gone. All the sins gone. Okay. No. That is ridiculous. Those people don't they're not in the ministry to believe that. A. They're certainly not a counselor like me. And see the destruction in people's lives from these curses. You can't even believe it. Well, yes, you can. And so it all came down from your family tree. Usually, if it didn't come down from your family tree, it was some bad personal sin on your part, or a witch or warlock or somebody put a curse on you or someone else put a word curse on you but usually generally speaking your garden variety curses come down from grandparents great-grandparents etc etc uh, do you live under a curse? Do you have any of these symptoms? So I wrote down a few. These are the uh, I mentioned the guy, poor guy that loses lawsuits all the time. Now here's uh, I've had dozens of people come in with these curses on them. They're always having accidents. It's utterly amazing. They they get in an accident all the time. Car wreck, slip and falls, fall at home, fall at work, workers comp, motor vehicle, rear ender. Every it's unbelievable. And you're sitting there listening to the story and you're going. You're kidding me. You've been in six car wreck. Okay, that's a curse. Okay, everybody gets in a car wreck Okay, I'm not saying that's a curse. Okay, so don't send me email I'm saying if there's a pattern you have to look for the pattern to, to catch it It's a pattern system Poverty is huge I'm doing good for a while bang and then everything falls apart and broke now. I've got some money. Oh my god. It's all gone. We've got money. We're doing fine. Up ah, the foreclosure. Everybody has a foreclosure. Everybody loses money. That doesn't mean it's a 
curse. But if you see a pattern of that, let's say your uncle, your dad, your great grand, you saw a pattern of it in your tree, and now you see that pattern in your life, that's a curse tumbling down, boom, landed on you, you're going to die broke. It's not crap shooting. No, they all end up broke. They don't have any money. Okay? Uh, you can't read the Bible. Or you got mental problems. Different things. You see a pattern of it in your family tree. Could be a curse. Yeah. From your in-laws? Like curse from your in-laws? Everybody has that one, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now. <clears throat> ministry is a great curse. You start a ministry, everything looks great. Boom, the bottom falls out of the thing. You start another ministry, everything's going great. Oh, boom, it's gone. You go to the mission field, ah, we'll send you millions of dollars. You get over there, 50 cents comes in. Everybody <laughs> dropped you. It happens all the time. I've had them in my office numerous times in tears. Missionaries that have come back, lost everything. Okay? So, if you, if you see that pattern, it, it's, a, it's related to a curse, some kind of a curse. Missionaries pick up curses easy. A, they're spiritually ignorant. B, they don't know anything about spiritual warfare, but they've got good hearts and they care. Oh, man, these people are easy pickings for the devil. They have good hearts and they care. So they go over to Cucamonga and they open up a ministry over there. And there's some churches there, religions there, witch doctors there who don't want them there. And they say, hey, we're going to get rid of this missionary. And they put curses on them. Well, if you go to some place and you don't know your head from hole ground when it comes to curses, and you don't have any spiritual warfare skills, and you don't know anything about deliverance, you're going to get caught. It happens all the time. Don't tell me it doesn't. They're sitting in my office. All right. Let's skip that then. How about this? Any of this? If you have a family tree with a lot of people having nightmares in it or repetitive bad dreams, you have the same dream over, click, 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 and then grandma had that. And <laughs> Finances, we just went over that. Relationships, we just went over that. Health problems, everybody got the same medical issues. Click, 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 click. Everybody's got breast cancer. Everybody's got joint problems. Everybody's got plumbing and organ problems. You see that pattern? That's, that could be related to a curse on the family tree. And remember, you weren't even born yet when a lot of these curses landed. And remember, just because you got saved, doesn't mean your rest of your family's not saved. Just because you're covered in the blood, the rest of your family's not covered in the blood. Each individual person must be born again individually and apply the benefits of the gospel to them individually. There is no group salvations. Any more, there's any more group repentance. You can't repent for what she did. You can't repent for what he did. Each individual will give account of themselves to God, period. And it's all done individually. At the judgment seat of Christ, there will be nobody there but you. No one. It's just you. Weird illnesses that don't uh, that you can't get cured if you have a family tree with those weird things in it usually a curse family insomnia curse usually not always remember I saying usually because I'm not saying always because I don't want to get emails <laughs> sleep paralysis family tree of that okay a legal problem I just went over that with my friend he always loses. Unbelievable events happen. This is a fantastic curse. Things happen to you you can't even believe. Crap happens to you that other people go. You stun others. They can't believe the crap in your... Boom, boom, boom. boom. How'd you get hit that often? That's unreal, Bob. I can't believe you said that. You ever met anybody like that? Don't point to anybody. <laughs> they have strange calamities hit them and weird things always going wrong. It's a curse. 
business fell apart another marriage down the tube car car blew up for no reason it was the warranty just expired oh, weird stuff happens to you this woman's laughing about the guy's warranty expired can somebody take her out here in the hall <laughs> Kelly, here's one. One of those three. Viv, Viv, get the trifecta in on that gal there. She's sick. Hey, check it out. You, you always feel like somebody's following, following you, man. Somebody's out there, and you got a family history of people that are singing that song. I always think somebody's watching me, and they're all singing it. <laughs> Weird. That's a curse. Now here's what's so horrible about curses if you get born again here and you carry your demons into your Christian life you then have a dysfunctional Christian life if you get saved here and you carry your sickness into your Christian life you have a dysfunctional challenging Christian life because you're ill well the same thing is true with the curses so if you had a curse when you got saved you carry it over things are going to Malfunction on it and it could go this way You could be sitting around going. I don't believe I've been listening to 12 hours of Kenneth Copeland and not a nickel has come in the door <laughs> You're like stunned you were expecting somebody to pull up in a yacht <laughs> You're expecting a call from a bank. Hey, we just found a check down here for 2.6 million. It's your names on it Thanks Kenneth okay. The blessings are being blocked Am I making myself clear? These curses can block your ministry, your growth, your health, your you name it, they can block it. Curses are horrible, they're scary, they're dangerous. And they'll block everything. All right. Let's apply some of these then. Sin and curses. How do how do word curses work? Let's go over those first. Here's how it works. Somebody with some kind of demonic spiritual authority says something about you in anger or rage or vindictiveness or vengeance or something. Okay? Someone who has no spiritual power just says, well, screw you too. Okay, that's that a curse is not going to transfer over to, to you. It's got to be somebody who has some kind of demonic sense who's focusing on you and putting that word curse on you it happens a lot with parents their spirits tell them to curse the kids so they'll say you're stupid you're not a good athlete your brother's better your sister's smarter I wish you were like this person why can't you be like that person? and they'll put this curse on the kid and then it's a it becomes a self-fulfilling curse after that they heard that so many times and the demons Take it to you and the person receives it and then it's fulfilled and they become usually become lifetime losers the person issues the curse the demons take the curse to you they are the transporters the teleporters the conduits of curses the spirits are the conduits the carriers of the curses I can't get a curse to you without them doing it So this person that curses you has to have some kind of negative energy, demonic energy, something about them, some kind of spiritual authority to why you and bang, the demons take that curse and boom, dumps it on you. And then you get sick, you get, that's why if you go to a witch doctor or a warlock or voodoo or priestess or something, they have spiritual power. And you go to them and say, hey, uh, somebody stole a bunch of stuff from my company oh okay you can get a somebody with spiritual power to put a curse on that person and you pay for it kind of like a reverse seance and that voodoo sends the curse through the demons to the person so anytime you're ministering somebody with curses there's always demons involved because they're kissing cousins they work together they can't work separately A demon can't just wake up tomorrow morning and go, you know, so I'm going to put a curse on that guy. I don't like him. I don't like his hair. 
there's nothing going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. But if he runs into his supervisor at work and that guy's got something and that guy hates him for whatever happened, it'll transfer. His demons will carry that curse to, to the person. Okay? So then word curses are extremely dangerous. They're the most popular ones, the most frequent ones. I thought I would do those first. James says that the tongue no man can tame. It's full of deadly poison. And that's what a curse is. It's a spoken word of poison to you to wreck your life, your relationships, your money, your finances, your happiness, your health, whatever it is. That's what it does. Okay? And that's why he was saying Christians cannot do that kind of thing by saying negative things because when you say negative things, you're actually cursing yourself. To Christians, curses are boomerangs. That stinking wife of mine, she is a boop, 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 boop. That thing boomeranged out and bang, comes right back to you. It's the law of sowing and reaping. You stupid cut. It comes right back to you. So James says, hey, you can't you cut that out. Stop doing that. You're killing yourself. Some people bless and curse out of the same mouth. Wow. Why, why are you blessing? Because you have spiritual power. As a born-again Christian, you can bless others with your anointing, with your giftings. Correct? The same thing is true then to me saying, this person's a that and you're a that and suck you and drop that. I can also ship curses out to people. And James says, that cannot happen with a Christian. You've got to stop that immediately. And this is how kids get cursed. First Peter chapter 2, the apostle talks about cursed children. And the United States is that far from an epidemic of cursed children all over the country. They're uh, constantly having the demons suck in their mind on these handheld things they are on all day long and they have these obsessive compulsive thought disorders and the spirits take their brains and they become antisocial they're withdrawn and all they're doing all day long is going they have no conscience they don't care about you they won't do anything you tell them to stop it they pitch a fit you ask them to do something they don't that no offense i didn't mean to describe your family to a t there <laughs> but anyway <laughs> Didn't mean to do that, wasn't accusing you anything. But anyway, this is how it happens. The kids are cursed, and the curses come down through the family, parents, and everything. Okay? All right, Ecclesiastes, curse not the king nor the thoughts. This is a great verse. Do not cuss, curse somebody in private. Why? A bird of the air will carry that voice. Jesus had a parable that likened demons to birds. The fowls of the air come and hide under the branches. Of the church they intermingle in with the church remember that parable parable then there was also the parable of the tares somebody at night comes in and sows tares in there this that's how it that's how it works the spirits take your curse in private or in a seance or wherever you're getting it and they take it too the person you you hate or you want hurt or whatever it is you want they take it to them then the uh, issue then becomes can it get, can it land can it get in okay. proverbs 26 a bird wandering a swallow flying so causeless curses Himam is the Hebrew word. It means meritless. They don't land on the person. If the person doesn't have an open door and the curse is meritless, it will not fall on this person. So uh, this guy here, is, his name's, let's make it up. His name's Bob. I curse Bob in the name of Satan. He is a serial adulterer. I curse you. 
Well, if he's not a serial adulterer, that's not gonna work. I gotta find something he is. Yeah. If I was just shooting in the dark and he was a serial adulterer, okay, there's a there's some luck to the thing, but generally speaking, they know what the person cursing you knows what you did or what kind of a person you are, and so they curse that way. Exodus 34. God, it says, keeps mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin, but he will know what, no way to clear the guilty. That's the purpose of the cross of Calvary. If I could have got rid of one sin out of my life, I would have gotten rid of all of them. What's my problem? Oh, I got big problems. I couldn't get rid of even one sin, let alone a lifetime of sins. I had a lifetime of sinning. I didn't turn my life over the Lord until I was in my 40s. So I, that's some pretty good sinning. I mean, not as bad as the rest of you heathen, but I mean, I was pretty bad. <laughs> well, if I could have saved myself, I would have done it. That was the point of it. I couldn't save myself. I couldn't even get rid of one stinking sin. Not one. I was hopeless. It was over. Then I got a call. Mercy called. Grace called. I did nothing for it. I had no merit, no value, no nothing. I am a nothing. I was a nothing. And Mercy knocked at the door. That's the point of the gospel. I couldn't get rid of even one sin, no matter what I did. I could have sacrificed a billion goats. I'm still stuck with this one sin. I dropped my keys and I said, damn it! Oh, one sin, now I'm going to hell. You didn't hear me. One sin sends the person to hell. One sin. God and one sin, they don't get along. That's what I thought. <laughs> exactly the reaction I had when I found out I couldn't get rid of one sin. I just blasted out a belt and a couple other things. You can't get rid of one sin. You don't have a ghost of a chance in hell of even getting rid of one sin, let alone a life to a sin. You're hopeless. Hopeless. So, um, this is an Old Testament scripture, right? Mm -hmm. And most people debate that that's not accurate for today. Uh -huh. Can you speak to how this is relevant yeah. in the face of Christ? The argument on the face of it is stupid. No offense. You don't believe that. Other people do. Right. Yeah, she's talking to a lot of ignorant people. If you ever looked at your son and then looked at you in the mirror, you'd be going holy criminy <laughs> That scripture applies today Because my son is as jacked up as I am and in fact he's getting worse Because the technology gets higher at every generation. So the sin is greater You notice it says iniquity Lamentations 3 Render to them a recompense, O Lord, according to the works of them. Give them, you curse them. In the Old Testament, people would pray and ask God to curse somebody. Not in the New Covenant. Mm -mm. Can't do it. That is a complete no-no. That prayer will never be answered. In fact, it's the opposite. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Love your enemies So the blessings will fall on you See loving people and blessing them is a fantastic act of selfishness Yeah, yeah, we get a lot of deep teaching here If you're blessing someone you're actually Helping yourself that's a the best greedy act you could do today 
back in the Old Testament, you could ask God, hey, these people screwed us over. Put a curse on them, Lord. And he'd do it. He cursed the Amalekites, and we don't need to go through all that. We, we don't do that now. We can't do that. That is an absolute no-no. You cannot curse somebody. That will boomerang right back at you. Galatians 6, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. That is an Old and New Testament teaching, and it applies in the dispensation of grace as well. And it also applies to all human beings, whether they're saved or not. Every human being, saved or not, sinner or not, lives their life from what they sow. That's why I'm having a seminar tonight. You're going to sow total destruction on these curses. I mean, you're just pregnant, see? But when you leave here, you're not going to sow into curses when you leave here. You're going to change, and you're going to repent, see? You didn't know I was a prophetic, did you? I'm just speaking prophetically there. You're going to change tonight. You're not going to pick up curses when you leave here. If you do pick up a curse, I will have Vivian come over to your house. And you want her to preach to your family? Oh, come on. You want the demons flaring in your house? I'll send Vivian over there. Okay? You are not going to pick up a curse when you leave here once you get it broken tonight. Period. That's the end of that story. <laughs> he that sows to the yes, amen. Mark eleven. Guess what happened? Jesus cranked out a word curse. Some word curses are good. I've done it before, and they're fantastic. If it's the devil, if it's demons, if it's sin, right? Jesus cursed a tree. What does that tell you? They don't have souls. When trees die or plants die, if the cactus die, they're not they're not around anymore. They're gone. I apologize if I offended anybody who talks to their plants, but <laughs> once 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 the pot is it's it's dead. It's not around anymore. There's no heaven for plot, pots. <laughs> I curse you. Why? The tr Learn the lesson. The tree was created by God and was supposed to be performing a certain ministry, so to speak, of providing figs, which is a good thing. Good. Figs are good. And it was not doing it. It was fig season. See? Jesus went shopping, just like we do. Fries, bets. He went to the tree. I'm starving. Jesus is not taking an Uber. He's walking everywhere. Okay, that's exhausting, walking everywhere. Correct? Yeah, some of you won't even walk to the garage. Jesus had to walk all through the village. He was tired. He sees a fig tree. Hey, figs are in season. I went over there. He's shuffling through the tree, and there's no figs on there. So he says, well, I'm not going to waste this trip to the fig tree. I'm going to use it as a teaching tool. I'm going to show these disciples how powerful someone is when they speak a word and they have the anointing. Die! And they came back later. Peter goes, hey, that tree. You curse that tree and it's dying from the roots up. That's weird. You can put a curse on the devil's work. Uh, his evil, his sin, whatever it is, whatever you're facing, command that thing to die. I command you to stop. I place a curse of failure on you. I stop in Jesus' mighty name. That There are good curses. All right. Now let's check out some things that's very important for you tonight. Uh, let's break down sinning because sinning is relative. Sinning has different ramifications with different people. If a sinner sins, that's what they do naturally and normally. And that's bad. Sinning's bad. 
And when sinners are sinning, that's bad. That could cost them their soul. But when Christians commit the same sins, that's worse than a sinner sinning. Because they know better, they have the Word of God, and they have the Holy Ghost. So what they're deliberately doing is <laughs> rebelling. Rebelling is as a sin of witchcraft. Witchcraft brings curses. And Jesus told this parable. It's in two chapters. The, the master of the Lord came back and he wanted to check out his servants. He gave them stuff to do. Remember? You remember that one? And then he says, listen, this guy here didn't, didn't do what he was supposed to do. This guy's like a fig tree. These two were this one, fig tree. Okay. <clears throat> Who cursed this guy? The demons did. If I am God and I protect you and hold you to my bosom, the demons can't get a hold of you. If I go, hey, why don't you sit out here in the open? Well, somebody else can come up. God doesn't put but if you sow into sin the spirit of God is grieved and he backs with you you are now open for what big problems that's what happened to this guy he was a fig tree and he was released to the tormentors then he says listen you people that knew to do what was right you're gonna reap more pain and sorrow than somebody who didn't know and did the same sin if this person does the same sin as that one this one doesn't know he's it's a sin and that one does this one has greater responsibility to God than that one did even though it's the same act Not normally. She wants to know if uh, there's a difference in understanding what's right and wrong if you speak in tongues or you don't. Not normally, no. That's a conscience issue. See, so whether you're whether you speak in tongues or not doesn't matter. You still have a conscience. So this person, Paul explained it in Romans. <clears throat> in the middle of Zunganda, Africa, there are tribes back there no one's ever seen. Okay, after they're dead, they have to stand before God on Judgment Day, and how does He judge them? By the Gospel, by the Torah, by no, He judges them based on their conscience. Did you violate your conscience, Mister Zagunda? Okay, when you cooked that guy and ate him, your conscience told you you shouldn't be eating humans. But you ate them anyway. <laughs> Is this making sense? Yeah. So you knew in here you didn't have the gospel to tell you cannibalism is not is a sin. Don't eat other people. <laughs> but your conscience told you, okay? You're in a tribe in Uganda, you don't you've never seen another human being, but your tribe, but you, you're having sex with third graders, your conscience is telling you that child is too young, that's wrong, don't do that. Judgment. They never heard it had a preacher. They never heard anything. If that makes any sense. Is their judgment the same as someone that knew that was wrong and did it? Any? No. It's lesser. See that the, the teeter-totter kind of tilts this way, so to speak. Even though it's the same behavior. He that did not know shall be beaten with less, less punishment. Same behavior, but less results.
To whom much is given, much is required. required. Exactly. So, I've been in the deliverance money ministry for years. If I got up tomorrow morning and said, "Honey, I'm going to whorehouse," I'll be back about <laughs> four o'clock when I'm done. Okay, now I'm going to pick up some nasty spirits over there. I mean, that's not going to go well for me, but that's going to go worse for me than it is for this Baptist guy over here who wouldn't know a demon from a <laughs> pickup truck. Is that my helping anybody? The thing, there's a sliding scale to sin. <laughs> because I know I'm, I know better than to do that. I know I'm going to pick up demons. A Baptist, doesn't, they don't even know demons exist. So he would not, it's different. That means hell comes to breakfast, sir. Any, any horrible thing in the world you can think of, he'll turn you over to the tormentors and the demons will do to you. Beaten, I mean beaten bad. Okay. It's just sowing and reaping. It's no different, obviously, than gravity. At my age, I stay on the ground. I mean, I stay right there. No, I do not run around. I do not climb things. I stay here. Why? Because at my age, that you know, a lot of the balance is gone. Uh, things are not working quite right. And I don't have the ability to leap small buildings at a single bound anymore. And so I don't go out to the edge of buildings. Ha ha ha, how you doing down there? Four stories. What's up? I don't do that. I don't do that. Okay. See? Yeah, it's called the gift of wisdom. I stay back over here. See? But if you just say, oh, I got the power of God, brother. See ya. We, they're going to be cleaning you up down there. Scoop, boop, there's the head, there's the left arm. Scoop. If you violate the laws of God, you got to pay sinner or saint. Period. Because more is required of you. Is anybody here not a born again Christian? Raise your hand. Okay, you guys are held to a higher standard in the spirit world than the guy down the corner here uh, who never, who's not saved. Because you know more, you've been given more, more is required of you. So your sin is worse. The demons go, oh, that guy sinned out there on the street. Oh, we got him. It's okay. Oh, look, that preacher sinned. <laughs> That's a different story. Now we really got him. Does that make sense? Why he knew better. If you know better, you're in deeper trouble than somebody who doesn't know better. So does someone who's saved through salvation when they sin? No. No, you don't lose your salvation when you sin, but you give the devil legal rights and you give demons the right to put these curses on you. Okay? If you lost your salvation when you sinned, there'd be no Christians. <laughs> but you'll you'll reap what you sow. If you're a Christian and you're sinning, you're going to, as that guy over there said, get beaten. And I added, beaten up bad. How do I know that? Amwa um, has been there. All right, let's look at your family tree. Do you have any of these curses in your family tree? Okay. The women in the Old Testament, Numbers chapter 5, this woman was accused of adultery. And there was a special process they went through for adulterers in the Old Testament. And they put a curse on them if they were lying. So somebody would get accused of committing adultery. And if they said, I'm not, I didn't do it, then they would bring them to the priest and go through a curse ceremony. An oath among our people when the Lord makes your thigh to rot and your belly swell. So the, par the, the person, if they were lying, if they weren't lying, the curse did not go on the person. Does that make sense? Well, same thing is true now. Without that, it's done in the spirit world. 
you're a born-again Christian and your conscience told you to stop it your neighbors told you your mom and dad told you you kept smoking and you just wouldn't stop smoking okay. and then you went to the doctor ah there's a black spot right here what's that well let's check it out oh you got lung cancer you'll be speaking in tongues while you're getting chemo why because you sowed it and now you're reaping it it's the law of the spirit world is there a smoking curse in your family just because you smoke no but if you've got a pattern a bunch of people dying of lung cancer in your family dead 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 now I got it breast cancer cancer click click me now I'm now I got it that's a curse just one incident of smoking and smokers emphysema or lung cancer doesn't mean they're cursed and then it said this water will cause the curse to go into your bowel so they made them drink uh, this water which if they were lying would give them this physical illness and they would die okay. it's kind of scary because I was watching TV preacher the other day and he was giving them holy water to drink when I saw that I switched it over to leave it to beaver first <laughs> Corinthians chapter 6 don't you know this is the Christians not sinners your bodies melos body parts your bodies are body parts of Christ shall I take my body part melos and make it a body part to a porne promiscuous woman pornos is a promiscuous man sometimes this is the King James Bible harlots and whoremongers were what terms they used back then to translate those Greek words but it means somebody who's sexually perverse or promiscuous that would be like a harlot or a whore or a gigolo or something like that or a promiscuous person serial adulterer what have you God forbid don't you know that person who is kolao glued to a harlot he's talking about having intercourse they're not two bodies anymore they've come together and they're one body during sex that's he's now he's giving us an anatomy lesson but there's a spiritual lesson behind it see when you get married one Well, if you sleep with someone, that's physically your one. And he says the two shall be one flesh. He that is glued to Yahweh or Jehovah is one spirit. So he's showing you, listen, the same way you can be glued to someone physically during intercourse, you can be glued to your Heavenly Father spiritually through the Holy Ghost. Glued. Super glued. Yeah, question? Uh, does that happen automatically or does that come through time or relationship? No, that happened, it what he's talking about here happens instantly. As soon as you take your body part, and I don't want to say it because I'll get an email, but there's a body part that's you use during that activity. You are then glued to that person. You're now part of a pornos or porne. Yeah, like absolutely. Or yep. As soon as you're born again, you're glued to the Lord. Oh. Yep. You're a child. You're a child of God. That's correct. Every sin that someone does is ectos outside your body, but if you fornicate, pornea is any kind of sexual sin, not just adultery. It could be anything. Pedophilia, oral sex, anal sex, uh, whores, gigoloth, porn. Uh, whatever it is any sin any sin at all falls under pornea that's a 
sinning into your body. It says he that commits fornication sends ice into their body. And he says you can't do that because your body contains the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you. The Holy Spirit's living in your body and you're not supposed to be attaching your body to a sexual sinning pervert. Is that right there. Also, like referring to a soul tie at the same time, or is that the separate? That's a separate to a tie. Yeah. yeah, that's separate. Yeah, but he's talking about the physical one now, the sin of doing that physically. Because you're, if you're committing fornication, sexual sin, you're you are actually glued to God while you're doing that, and your body parts. Are all for the Lord and he explained it later he said not everybody's an eye or an ear right we all have different body parts melos but we make up the whole body Christ and the foot doesn't say to the ears we don't need you the ears don't say that to the feet Everything is needed because everything makes up the body of Christ. Therefore, you are just as value as any other person who is saved on this earth. You are a melos, a body part of Christ. And you're as valuable as any other body part. Even though you have a different function. Correct? This, this body part here, it's important. I use my pinky, you know, I don't, I've never audited it, but I think I use it regularly. But this isn't as important as my head. Okay? So I'd rather, if I had to lose one of them, I'd, I'd let this one go and I'd keep that. If I had a choice. <laughs> Correct? But it's still valuable. Every body part in the body of Christ is of great value to God. They all have a purpose. See, each one of you have a purpose and you have great value in your life. You're not supposed to hook yourself up to some whore or some adulterer or some fornicator. You're glued to God. Don't glue yourself to some whore or gigolo or, or fornicator or pornography or chat line or whatever you're doing that's fornication. Stop that. You're going to reap what you sow and the demons are going to see you doing it and there it goes. They're going to come right at you. Your body's not yours. That's why. You also sin into your body because the spirit transfers from that person to this one during intercourse. If you fornicate with somebody, their spirits can transfer into you. So can their sicknesses. <coughs> happens all the time. I've talked to dozens of people who said, oh, I slept with this person or I dated that person. Or I was married to that person. And then everything changed. I started mentally, physically, things went bad. It's transfers. If you marry somebody you shouldn't marry, you're, you're taking your life in your hands. Particularly if the in-laws are bad. But anyway, let's get back to this. Now, I'll give you an example how this works. Here you see King David unleashing curses on his family. He fornicates with Bathsheba and murders her husband. And look at the rest of the family. They were all killers and fornicators. Is this thing on? Absalom killed Amnon. He got he hung, he got hung. Am, Amnon dead. He raped Tamar. Tamar lived the rest of her life alone. Right? Adonijah, he got killed by Solomon. He wanted one of David's wives. Solomon was the worst one of all. You're sinning and you've got curses and you dumped them on your kids, but have you noticed your kids end up worse than you? Have you noticed you sinned and failed and you're looking at your kids going, man, you got to stop that. I can't believe you're doing that. And that's coming from you. Have you looked at you lately? <laughs> Fright night. Your kids are worse. Each succeeding generation sins more and gets worse. 
And there's the curse there from King David. Deuteronomy 27. You pick up curses if you sleep with animals. Well, Brother Mike, I've never slept with a goat. Good. Very good. That's good. But believe it or not, uh, sexual activity with animals, particularly pets and dogs, believe it or not, it's a lot more common than you would think, particularly in childhood. Kids putter around or experiment with animals, and they can pick up curses from licking and all that stuff with Animals. That's bestiality. Uh, Deuteronomy 27. Curse be he that lies with his sister. Any form of incest, which happens a lot when you're younger. You have sexual experimentation, kids, kids screwing around, uh, kids that are wounded with dysfunctional families often have incest with each other, brings temporary relief, but in the end it just brings nothing but trouble. Mother in law, anything that had to do with family, sensuality, brought curses on people. So if you did that when you were young and you can't, and you've noticed a pattern of having a curse, that may be when it triggered in when you were seven years old. If you do what now? Deuteronomy 22, that's essentially forcing somebody, date rape, rape, something of that nature. That brings a curse. How about an Achan curse? Do you have any of these? Joshua 7. Israel has sinned, said the Lord, and they have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded to them. They have taken a cursed thing, and they stole it, disassembled it, and hid it. What happened to him? He, got, he died and was executed. He had stolen... Stuff like King Saul did. God told him, listen, don't take any of their stuff into your house. It's all demonic. It's got demons. It's been blessed by demons. It's all idolatry. Don't touch it. And this guy took some stuff home, remember? And he hid it under his tent, and that ended him. His whole family died as a result of it. Neither shall you bring an abomination into your house, lest you be cursed like it. Do you have any of this stuff in your house? My recommendation is you get rid of them quickly. Now, none of this stuff does you any good. Religious jewelry is useless. You got crosses, pictures of Jesus, a baby Jesus hanging in the bathroom. That has absolutely no value whatsoever. The only thing that has value is God's holy word and the Holy Spirit living in your spirit, man. That's the only thing that has value. doesn't matter what you're wearing or what, what kind of a religious outfit you got on. Robes, cone heads. Chains, religious bling, all that stuff is useless, it's valueless, it has nothing of any value. And in fact, it can be drawing curses and it can be blessed by demons. Mother Mary statues, different things like that. I would get rid of all of it if I was you. Paintings, North, uh, Native American paintings are extremely dangerous. Uh, what's those dolls I have? Kachina dolls, those are, those are, what are those? Demons. What is a Kachina doll? It's a medicine man. Right? Yeah, it's, a, it's all demons. So I get that stuff out of your house. You don't need that painting. Uh, here's a bunch of religious jewelry with a lot of fancy stuff in it. Indian jewelry, different things like that. <clears throat> Particularly if you get a for, something from a foreign country, not so much here. If you buy a cross at Walmart, you're probably fine. Probably nobody, nobody uh, had a voodoo seance over that. But if you buy something from India or Native American where that commonly happens, where things that are made and are blessed when they're made, you could be running into some trouble. I just get rid of it to be on the safe side. Rosaries, get rid of them. Witchcraft. Rosaries, well, that, that stuff's all demonic. Rosary has no value at all. None and nothing has any value. This building has no value whatsoever. A church is useless. You are the church, and the Holy Ghost lives in you. You're the temple of God. There's, this isn't a temple. It's just a okay? After the rapture, I'll never think of this place again.
and let it rain across my mind. I'm going to give it back to the Mormons. <laughs> I'm going to leave this building in my will to the Mormons. After the rapture, dude, you can have it back. Bring Moroni over, cart him in here. Party on, dude. Churches mean nothing. Jewelry means nothing. Nothing means anything except God's Word and the Holy Ghost living in you. Sent me his Masonic ring to give to my son. Last night I put it in the garbage. Oh. She said uh, she was given a Masonic ring and she put it in the garbage, which is where it belongs. The Mason demons are, wow, they're super powered. They don't come out easy, they're real nasty. <clears throat> This kind of stuff here, absolutely no good whatsoever. Statue of Jesus there. There's a statue of Mother Mary. Totally valueless and useless. They don't mean nothing. I'll prove it to you. John chapter 4. Jesus looks over at the greatest thing in the history of Judaism. What was that? Herod's temple. I mean, you can't get a bigger trinket than that. That thing was huge. People went, came from miles around, countries around, to see that temple. It was spectacular. King Herod was a spectacular architect. Jesus said, you see this temple here? Yeah, we do. We love it. It's fantastic. Not this whole thing eventually will be completely torn down, all of it. And then he went on to say something insane. He told the woman at the well, listen, worshiping on that mountain and this one and that this church means nothing it's coming and it's now is when the true worshipers of God will worship him in spirit and in truth and father seeks such to worship him what did that tell you nothing has any value of any kind other than God's Word and the Holy Ghost in you hey if King Herod's temple got booted your rosary beads aren't gonna last <laughs> Here's another one popular Buddha. Oh, they're so cute. No, I would not bring a Buddha doll in your house. That's risky. Angel statues, ugh, completely useless. Many of them are demonic. I'd get rid of all of them if I were you. That's my recommendation. Greed curses. You have those in your family tree? Proverbs 11. The liberal soul shall be made fat. He that waters shall be watered himself. What's that saying? The law of sowing and reaping. That's the Old Testament version of how they worded it. He that withholds corn from the people shall be a curse to him. Blessings on the people who sell it. Proverbs 28, he that gives to the poor shall not lack. He that hides his eyes will be cursed. That's a great verse. That's why people feed, feed the homeless and help people that don't have any money. Catholics are real good with that. They're they're fantastic with that. Yeah. How about uh, like crystal balls and psychic stuff like that? Totally demonic. No, that'll you'll get cursed in a heartbeat if you go to one of them. Those people are cursed. All those psychics, they all die, usually young, and they all die with strange illnesses. That's extremely dangerous going psychic. That is a complete no no. I've had many Christians come in for counseling who went to a psychic. After they were born again, trying to get direction for their life. I'm not even making that up. Yes, sir. It's all demonic. I, I would not let, particularly let your kids around it. Amen. Demons will jump in a kid when they get scared. You wouldn't believe it. They pick up fear spirits just like that over watching scary movies. The exorcists had untold hundreds of thousands of people infected with demons. People were fainting in the aisles watching that show in 1973. That thing shocked the world. People were throwing up, running to the bathroom, running out of the theater. They were all picking up demons.
Yeah, and you recommend never never get involved in that stuff. Very risky. So Mike, what about reading your horoscope? <coughs> Don't read your horoscope. That's asking for demons. You're asking for trouble there. See? You got the Holy Ghost and you got God's word. You get your answers from those sources. You don't get the answers anywhere else. What do you say? Oh, the last one? Hold on a minute. That means if you ignore them. Right? Yeah, like this. I don't want to see it type of thing that's kind of the way he's wording it but he's just really saying tough you're on your own Matthew 25 Jesus will say to these people on the left hand depart from me you are cursed people in the church who are cursed it's right there it's right there people in the church are cursed I was hungry, you didn't feed me, I, I needed this, you didn't do it. You turned your eyes from me, like the proverb said. You were sick, you didn't help me, you just, nope, not interested. Guess what happened? When you didn't do it to them, he said, you didn't do it to me. It's scary being a Christian, you know why? To him is given much, much is required. Once a person gets born again, they have now crossed the line of life, and you can't go back. If you go back, hell will follow you. You can't get out of it now. Here's why. If you get saved, and then you backslide, or you turn your back on God, the demons are going, we can't make the mistake of this guy coming back again. We're going to have to finish him. So they hit him twice as hard. If you're a born again Christian and you're deliberately sinning, screw it, whatever. It's all good. I got greasy grace. I'll just ask for forgiveness. I'm fine. Hey, God may forgive you, but greasy grace draws in curses and demons because you're deliberately and willfully doing it. You're taking your life in your hands because you got saved. Getting born again is an oh my God moment because you will never be the same again. You're never the same again. If you go back to Christ, whatever you do, or go on to victory, you're never the same again. Once you're born again, man, you are either in eternal life or you in deep trouble. You have to change. And what if she's the only Christian children now that's that's very common she's talking about most Christian families yeah there's usually one or two maybe saved in the family then you got X amount of units living in sin you just keep loving them and keep praying for them and wait for God to break them and then when he does you rush in with the gospel if you preach to them and nag them blah 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 they will run to the devil as fast as they can don't preach to them and don't nag them because they will run from Run to God, devil and run from you and God. Don't do that. You got to wait for God to crack them. Then you make your move. That's how you do it. And it works every time. Virtually every time, I should say. I got unsaved relatives and I'm just watching them every day, every week, what's going on. I keep tabs on them because once the crack comes, then I'm going to bolt over there. And get me a soul but I don't call him up saying you know something man you are a sucking sinner <laughs> God. man you're you know what you're gonna burn in hell I mean, if you're starting to burn right now do you feel your feet hurt see if you if you force the gospel on somebody they will run to Satan they will be offended at you they won't listen to you anymore and you will break your chance to witness to them but if you use love and patience you will have your opportunity when God moves first, you can't force somebody to get saved. You move after he moves. Yeah, that's right. 
The YouTube people know this is good teaching tonight. They know that YouTube this is good. Oh, One person here knows it now. Let's check over here <laughs> Stealing and swearing you have one of these in your family Did you have a bunch of cursors and that kind of people in your family tree you may have this curse on you? Zechariah chapter 5. This is the curse that goes over the face of the whole world people who steal and swear will eventually be cut off Stealing and swearing brings a curse it happened to Peter he denied the Lord three times and Then the cocks start crowing That was the best thing Looking back on it that ever happened to Peter Here's why people who have curses and also have pride Are almost impossible to save They never come to God they won't change they won't listen to you. They know better. It goes on and on. I mean year after year it Drives you crazy Okay, the only way for somebody who's cursed and has pride and arrogance and so on is when they are smashed They have to be broken to get saved the only way someone with narcissistic personality disorder can get saved or repent of their sin is if they are broken Narcissism is a horrible mental illness and those demons just won't come out Because they hijack the person's free will so God in his wisdom has to break that person To get him to snap out of it mm -hmm. Did you have relatives that also cursed a lot? Or yeah, did you have a relatives that swore a lot? Yeah. yeah, see now that that guy there is gonna get healed tonight yeah. He's got family curses. He's got cursors in the family, you know Drill sergeant cursing and th that brings in a curse saying a, a curse word doesn't bring a curse on you Damn it. I can't believe I did that <laughs> What well, that's not a curse, but if you live in a family like he did where every other word was a curse word and you cursed with authority and Pressure and came out of your soul That's cursing that brings in a curse Sorry for the pun Does that make sense He has a history of it in his family tree. That's it now. He's got the same demons it's cursing and swearing they're, they're blasphemy spirits is what they're called They curse all the time and mentally ill people frequently have blasphemy spirits. They hear somebody in their head saying curse words. They're swearing in their head. They can hear them. And then the spirits in their head tell the person that they're sinning. How dare you have those thoughts? And so the person then takes on shame, condemnation, and they never get delivered. What you have to do as a minister is explain to the person there's a bifurcation issue The person in your head is not you so if they're swearing that's not your sin So if you hear curse words in your head That's not your sin God's not mad at you at all even if it's horrible like f you Jesus You heard that in your head that's 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 not your sin It's their sin Summer. Good. And after that, I started having repetitive dreams of me just cursing up a storm. Okay, and good. I, and I don't wake up with guilt, but I wake up really angry. Oh, good. Excellent. Did you hear that? That was beautiful. I always get one or two great uh, additions to the seminars. It's a tremendous blessing. Thank you for that. She she got delivered from cursing. Now. Uh, I don't know what she means by delivered, but in her mind deliverance meant she stopped the behavior Which is what she just said. Did you hear her? Yes. she said she stopped cursing however the, uh, Not all the blasphemy spirits are out of her. They will be after tonight yes. They're not out of her because now they're now since they're not she's not letting them speak it They are now attacking her in her subconscious mm -hmm. in her dreams and they are cursing up a storm in there does that make sense? Yeah. In other words, now they got to go in the back door. 
But once they're out, she won't have those dreams anymore. Hallelujah. That gal just gave a testimony. She doesn't have her nightmares anymore. She won't have those blasphemia dreams anymore once they're out of there. If a person has spirits, let's say two, three, four, five blasphemy spirits, and these come out so they're not speaking it anymore, that doesn't mean these came out. So now they're this the ones that were left are now attacking the dreams. The verbal ones are out. Peter remembered the words of Jesus and he went out and what did what here is what you need Peter had narcissistic demons he was arrogant he was proud he had King Saul demons he had a uh, Pharaoh demons pride he had satanic demons Satan's greatest sin was pride the only way for somebody who has Severe pride to get healed is if they're broken you, They won't get healed by praying preaching teaching reading meditating. It's not gonna work Those spirits are too strong So God knew Peter had to be broken And so the Holy Spirit used this classic setup, which is typical for him, he outsmarts the devil. The demons told Peter to give G Jesus a ration of BS. Oh, you're not, you're gonna, no, you're not gonna die. Uh -uh. No, I'll die with you if you're gonna die. Oh, I'm gonna, well, yeah, I'm, I'm a martyr. <laughs> Jesus said, Oh, Peter he said it lovingly. He wasn't castigating him. I can kind of see them talking right now. He said to him gently and loving Peter, you're not only not going to die for me, you won't even admit you know me three times later this evening. Peter looked back at him like he was on crack. <laughs> he couldn't believe a word he said. Don't you see it? He didn't believe anything he said. He has said, of course, God's wrong. People who are narcissists and have pride and arrogance always believe they know better than God. If you have people around you, the, should you wean off of them? What do you mean? Well, if you can get away from them, I would, but uh, some people can't do that. They're Usually married to them. <laughs> They're coming in the door. So. Well, again, she's asking me if she should hang out with them. Again, I can't answer that because I don't know what her reaction is when she hangs out with them. I don't have enough information. But should you keep praying for them? Yes. Should you preach to them and try and straighten them out? Absolutely not. They're not going to listen to you. You have to wait until God breaks them. God broke Peter, but he didn't tell him to lie to Jesus. The demons did. See, that was his arrogance and pride. I'm going to die with you. See? So the Holy Ghost heard that, saw it, and set this incredible miracle for Peter. This was Peter's miracle. Being broken is the best blessing you'll ever have. I'm talking to the addicts now. Oh, I want to talk to the addicts for a minute. If God breaks you, it's the best blessing you'll ever have. Because if he doesn't break you, you will die an addict. Peter had to be broken, and he did, and we're all better for it. First and second. Peter, day of Pentecost, oh, did he have an incredible ministry. But it would have never happened until he was broken. Curses broken off of him, the demons broken off of him. And it says he was Clio wailing. That's not crying or weeping, that's wailing. And Picrus violently crying. This tore Peter to pieces. Because just a few moments ago, a few hours ago, 
he had told Jesus I'd die for you and then he denies him three times in public and Peter was the arrogant big mouth ah he was the one always shooting his mouth off in public narcissists like to be recognized in public they're hard workers for God but only if somebody's watching or knows about it if it's done in your closet or secretly that's your job you do it they don't want to do it if you don't get rid of your curses tonight that's not going to discourage me because I just wait until God breaks you and then we will get rid of them quickly and easily broken people are God's favorite people Well, this is good preaching, but it kind of died there. I made this up. I made this one up. This is not in the Bible. I call it the Reggie White curse. You ever heard of him? Nobody? Well, anyway, this guy was a unbelievable football player. The guy was a freak. I don't think he was even human. I read an article on him one time that said he doesn't even, didn't even lift weights, and he was stronger than all the other players that lifted weights. He was like three or four hundred pounds and ran like a Carl Lewis. This guy wasn't even human. He was so good. Well, he had become a born again Christian, and the way Reggie Wright did everything, anything he got involved in, he was all in. He had that type A super overdrive personality. You ever met somebody like that? He had a kind of a Trumpish existence. <laughs> Waited all night to let that one go. <laughs> Reggie got involved with church people. No offense. Church people. And his Christianity took a dump. Because a type A overdrive Christian is coming in, let's serve God. And if you go to church with that attitude, you're dead in the water. <laughs> Nobody wants to serve God. They're warming their fanny on the pews looking for some benefits and they're out the door. Plus, they're living in sin. And Raj started meeting all these ministers and pastors and they're going, hey, these people are compromising their faith. They're not living a strict Christian life. And he got the demons tricked him. They got him discouraged and they got him to look at the people instead of the Savior. See? I, I, I deal with Christians all the time who are holy on cell Sunday and they're like hell the rest of the week. It don't bother me. I don't even flinch. It doesn't bother me the least. Why? I'm not looking at that person for perfection. I look to Jesus, the author and finisher of my man. I don't look to you. No offense. For divine holiness, I'm looking to Jesus. I'm not looking at you. I don't look at a human being for anything divine. I'm looking at the Savior, the Son of God. And if I keep my eyes there, I'm not going to go down over something you say or do. Amen. Reggie blew it. The demons tricked him. And they got him to go back. He started looking at Judaism. And oh, these are laws. Don't, 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 don't. Do, 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 do. And he got around a bunch of Jews who don't, 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 and do, 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 do. And he got sucked in. He was dead like a year later. Bastard curses. This is very common here in America because high levels of promiscuity, lots of unwanted births, lots of children born without mothers or fathers, etc. Lots of adoptions, different things. Deuteronomy 23. Well, well, it depends on what you mean by bastard. Um, it, if it's in this context, technically they're bastards. 
says the bastard shall not enter the congregation of the Lord unto the tenth generation. Imagine that. They had ten generations of curses on them, which is the longest one mentioned in the Bible. Hebrews chapter 12. If you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then you are bastards and not sons. Okay. Paul was explaining to the Messianic Jews and Hebrews that undisciplined Christians who don't follow the Word of God and won't obey are very similar to Old Testament bastards who had no, had no family or were born out of wedlock and who had ten generations of of curses on them. They could not go in the congregation for ten generations. So if you were born out of wedlock, guess what? There's hope for you, and here it is, Psalms 27. When my father and mother forsook me, your heavenly father is ready to take you up. And and if your parents cursed you, that can be broken tonight because you don't need your mom and dad anymore. You have your heavenly father. That's all you need. Amen. Now, it doesn't mean to go, should I go home and shoot my parents? Of course not. <laughs> Stupid. You honor your parents. You do not trash your parents. That's going to bring a curse on you. Do not ever do that, even though they're wrong and even though they're idiots. I got that. Yeah, my parents were like that. They were wrong and they were idiots. But I treat my dad with the utmost respect. Yes. What was that question over Ma'am. Um, my mother married my dad and had me, uh -huh. and then found out my dad was still married to somebody else. Polygamy. Yeah. So. No, you're not a bastard. No. <laughs> no, that sin was on your dad. Yeah, doesn't matter if you're a bastard. Let's say you were. In fact, it happened last week. And here, some some gal gave birth to a child in Mesa, and they found it in a dumpster in the apartment. Where was that? Did you see it in the paper? Yeah, they found that kid in the dumpster. <clears throat> that child will never know their dad, probably never know the mother, but it doesn't matter. The Holy Ghost looked in the dumpster, sent somebody over there to notice. The kid in the dumpster. They took the kid to child protective, and the Holy Ghost says, "Can't wait to get that kid." He wants to take him up. Yeah. Bastard Kurtz are easy to break on. You forgive your parents. You speak blessings over them. You release them, and we'll break that curse over off you tonight. And it, that'll never be a problem again. Financial curses. These are very common here in America. Malachi 3, what's that? Cheap, cheap, cheap Christians. Cheap Christians. The rot gut TV preachers have bastardized giving, and it's all false. Here's the truth. If you give out of a good heart to God with sincerity, the amount doesn't matter to God. If you're chintzy and you're Cheap to God that matters the demons see it I had a guy come in from counseling one time and say what do you do? Oh, I don't want to tell you no, I mean I'm a I'm your counselor today You tell me anything I ask you no matter what I ask you tell me what the answer is period I sell drugs. Okay. I didn't even flinch. It didn't even bother me. Until he wanted to give me a donation. I said, hey, I don't want any drug money at the house of healing. Forget about it. Uh, God will pay the bills. I don't need to take. Don't you see? It's not the amount. It's state of your heart. It's the widow with two mites, Jesus said, gave more than all the others combined. That's true giving. It's not the Copeland insanity of, I'll give you a hundred, God's going to give me ten thousand. That, that's a bunch of horse 
stuffing. <laughs> that is not true. That's not going to happen. Fool. It's all about here, you know. I was in a service one time uh, over here on the Greenway. I was over at a prophetic church, and this guy had come to see us at the House of Healing from uh, Texas. He took a bus in, and we were praying for him over there. We were doing deliverance that night, and he didn't have any money. He got a bunch of demons out. He was so happy. He didn't have any money, so he gave he, he put an old pair of shoes in the offering. I thought that was the most wonderful gift. They were not nice shoes. Okay, I, I wouldn't have worn them. Nobody would have worn them. But it was the idea. It was the, he was. Does that make sense? It's not the mount that impresses God. It's what's behind what you gave. If you're cheap, you can curse yourself financially. See, it says Rodney went in offerings. An offering is a free will offering. It comes from your heart. Giving is the something of the heart. <laughs> it's a sin for me, like these insane TV preachers, to try and pressure you to give me and this ministry money. That's a sin in the eyes of God. And I don't want to pressure somebody to do it. I would rather have somebody give less, but give out of an honest and good heart. See, that blesses the ministry, not a bunch of drug money. It's not just dollars and cents to God is I guess what I'm trying to say if I'm explaining it right God sees your money, but he sees what went behind it. That's what's important to him. It's not the amount You have, a, you have this one anybody in your family history murderers man that brings a curse on the family tree so fast Murderers in your family tree. You'll see a lot of weird deaths a lot of strange accident deaths, killed in a car accident, uh, fell off a bridge, shot, different things down the family tree. Murder demons are scary. So, yeah, thank you. What's your name, sir? Bruce. Huh? Bruce. Bruce. Bruce yeah. Like okay, you're not leaving tonight, are you? No. Okay. Uh, he just said his dad killed himself. Do you hear that? Huh? With a gun. Do you hear that? My guess is up in that family tree, there was a lot of really bad stuff going on there. And so, curse be he that nakah murders your neighbor in secret. That's kind of like a, a mafia hitman, really, that verse, isn't it? They they have a, they draw a hit on somebody, they get paid X amount of dollars, that person's eliminated. Now that brings a terrible curse on their family. Do you ever watch any of those crime shows? You ever notice all those gangsters, their families end up sick, dead, in poverty? Do you ever watch that Godfather series? You notice how almost everybody ended up dead in that movie? Nobody noticed that? Well, anyway, The Godfather was a movie that <laughs> came out a few years ago and won several Academy Awards. Lord, bail me out of this. And uh, I hear an angel calling me. Now, <laughs> once once they started killing people off, they let murder demons in, and out of the bang, 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 the whole family got killed off. Michael Corleone's half his family dead. Murder curse. Idolatry is the most horrible sin. A curse if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord. That's true in the New Testament too, isn't it? But the Lord doesn't put the curse on you. Who does it? That Satan puts the curse on you. You reap what you sow. Turn out of the way which I command you this day and go after other gods that you have not known. That brings a curse on you. And we got curses all over Maricopa County. Here's a Mormon temple in Mesa. Here's a Hindu temple in Maricopa. We've got, we got uh, Krishna temples here. We got Islamic mosques now popping up all over the place. There's the one on the freeway, I-17 there. Uh, we got masons all over the place here. Shriners are like masons light. 
Buddha's here. Wow, it's unbelievable. This is all stuff that brings in demons and carries curses into your family tree. Vietnamese dragons, terrible curses. Uh, these kind of things also bring curses. If you have relatives in your family tree that were Jehovah Witnesses or Mormons, very dangerous. We bought this building from the Mormons. Did I tell you that? I didn't tell you that? Yeah, we bought this from the war. Mormons. And uh, around this hall over here, there's a boiler room in there where all the air conditioning and heating units are. And there's a, a secret door on the floor in the corner. I lifted it up, and there's a tunnel under this building from that thing. Yeah. And uh, I think the golden plates are under there. <laughs> That's right. Yes. That's correct. And as soon as I find a midget Christian, I'm getting them plates. They're probably somewhere out. And we are moving out of this building to the National Deliverance Center. I mean, residential facilities, giant auditoriums, everything. And as soon as I get them plates sold, switching over to the Copeland system, I'm getting a limo, two three Joyce Meyer mansions, a fleet of Cree Flow dollar luxury cars, all mine, waiting for a midget Christian. This kind of stuff here brings all kinds of curses. Okay, We had spirits in this building right after we bought them. They were run out a long time ago. Oh, they got their butts kicked. <laughs> Jehovah Witnesses, extremely dangerous. Extremely dangerous. Bring in curses. But with your building, did you just, did you anoint the building in just telepathically? Or how did you go about? How did we get the demons out of this building? Yeah. I called a bunch of Christians over, kind of like you. Adam, come over here and just sit around and see if anything happened. <laughs> Nothing happened. <laughs> now, here's the Talmud. <laughs> This is all Jewish stuff. Don't ever get involved with Judaism or Jewish stuff. You're a Christian, not Jewish. You're going to get stuck in bondage. Poor Reggie White. The Quran, oh, all kinds of curses and spirits. Movies that we talked, Guy mentioned earlier, horror movies. These mystical movies, horror movies, spiritual movies. Half the TV shows on di satellite disc now or something related to the occult, spirits, ghosts. Ghost stories. Uh, I watch a couple of them. Uh, celebrity ghost stories. You ever, you ever heard of that one? No, I watch that every week. And then there's another one I watch. Uh, Matthew Henry, is that his name? Tyler Henry? That medium kid? What's his name? Tyler Henry. I watch that show every week. It's really interesting. I like to, I feel like I'm spying on the enemy. That's what I'm doing. I feel like I'm a CIA. <laughs> I watch how the demons trick the people, and I see what they say and how they say it, and how they trip them up, and how they get them to believe lies. I watch those shows just to see how the spirits do it. So when I have somebody in here, I got a frame of reference on how to defeat it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. She said, "Does it open portals?" Now, I don't know anything about portals, but the spirits come in to the home some way when you open these doors. So I recommend absolutely, particularly kids. Kids get infected really easy watching movies. They're very susceptible. Through the TV. Through the TV, yeah, not a portal, exactly. Okay, so these things are all drawing spirits. Here's some ancient ones. Instead of uh, Mormons and Hindus, we had Moloch and Baal years ago. Diana was a great god of the Greeks. She is related to lust and sexual sin and different things. What are all these things? Well, Paul summed it up for us. All of these religions, all of these gods are what? They are actually devils. That's the King James Bible. Daimonian is a Greek word. It means demons. So if you're sacrificing to Krishna, Mother Mary, whatever it is, you're actually sacrificing to a spirit, it says. And I do not want you to have fellowship with 
daimonian demons because you cannot drink out of the cup of the Lord and go drink out of the cup of devils <clears throat> just last month a mother and a son came here from out of state the son uh, got one of the most spectacular deliverances I've ever seen I mean he was had a legion in him and they, these things were coming out for an hour it was spectacular it was crazy uh, it was the kind of deliverance I usually reserve for Kelly I let her have them. I like the quiet ones that just go <laughs> this guy is booming and he is so happy when it's over it's unbelievable he's in the state of shock after this thing went back home gave him the homework what to do to renew your mind here's what you got to do didn't do it and then got reinfected what was he doing you can't drink out of the cup of the Lord here here tonight and then go out there and drink out of the cup of demons you can't live with this foot in Christianity and that one in the Amen. gates of hell. You can't do it. There's a price to pay. Amen. And you're going to pay it. To expand about the differences, are there differences between demonic spirits as fallen angels and are there evil spirits in the world that have come from human beings? Is oh, okay. No, I don't really want to explain that, but angels are angels, demons are demons. They're not the same. That's no. They're they're fallen angels. They're not demons. Demons are disembodied spirits. We'll go over that tomorrow at the deliverance training center right here at noon. I'm covering that subject tomorrow. Then he said, "Do evil spirits come from other people?" No. Uh, if you die, your spirit either goes to God who made it, or you go to hell. That person is gone. They can't hear you or see you. They're out the door. When he dies, if he has spirits, they leave his body and head for other family members because they always stay in the same same tree. But there are movies being made that support the latter. Oh, I don't care what movies say. The if you're a born again Christian, you die. You're leaving here. You're not here anymore. And if you see your relative at night at two in the morning in your room, that's not them. That's a familiar spirit. That's a demon impersonating your dead so and so. Do not talk to that spirit. Get him out of that room. If you're not saved and he dies, the demons drag your soul to hell. Nobody goes to hell. No one goes to hell. No one has ever gone to hell. They're taken there. And that's it. It's a dead body after that. You can't get somebody's spirit. People feel other people's spirits, but those are usually demonic soul ties. We'll get to that tomorrow during the teaching. Okay? Yeah. About, uh, saints that died, uh, like uh, the cloud of witnesses, like uh, maybe Elijah and Moses that came and talked with the Lord on the Mount of Transfiguration. Yeah. That's nothing to do with it. No, that's just Moses and Elijah come down to see Jesus. I got nothing to do with me. I was born two thousand years later in a dysfunctional family, yeah, white trash, low income, struggling to survive. I got nothing to do with that visitation. Jesus was—that's his business. Moses and Elijah—they don't come visit me. I don't need them. I got the Holy Ghost. All right, that's preaching words. Rick, you listen. Show you how you preach here. Oh, he's nodding his head. I see it. Okay, let's quickly get through this. First Samuel 15. If you brought a curse on yourself because you are disobedient and rebellious, you remember that rebellious period you went through when you were younger? Oh, it has severe ramifications. Why? Because it's the same as witchcraft. Witchcraft. Nathan third chapter 3 and Nineveh he's talking about the land of Nineveh because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot 
the mistress of witchcrafts that sells their nations through her whoredoms and families through witchcraft. The whole town of Nineveh was destroyed like Sodom and Gomorrah. Why? It had been overrun by witchcraft curses. And if you know somebody that has these spirits or these curses on them, you'll see usually see these kind of symptoms in the person. They're very religious. They're interested in religious things. They're mystical. They have high levels of spirituality. They take offenses and get angry quick. They like to pay people back. They're very sensual, sexual, sensual people. Control freaks, manipulators, those are all people with witchcraft spirits. Here's a psychic down from the House of Healing. That's this is all forms of witchcraft, any kind, any way, any type of communicating to the other side, not through the Word of God, the Holy Ghost is witchcraft. You can't do that. You cannot do that. You're running. Okay, here's our last one, and then we'll we'll shut down tonight. Some of you may have a curse on you that you brought on yourself unknowingly. Here's what it is. Honor your father and mother so that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God gave you. Exodus 20, Ephesians 6. Children, obey your parents and the Lord. This is right. Honor your father and mother. That's the first commandment with a promise. So that it may be well with you and you may live long. Okay. It says here to honor your father and mother. We went over this several times. Uh, that's the Greek word tomeo. It means to place value upon them. It doesn't mean to agree with everything they say or do. So maybe your parents were drunks like mine were or worse. Okay. To get that curse broke off me, I had to repent of rebelling against my parents, trashing them. I said negative things about them. I criticized them. I pointed out their faults. I highlighted the things that were true. You ever do that? Highlighting stuff that's true? You know what you did? You did this. You did that. You did this. Even if it's true, you're reaming them out. And you're, you know what you're doing? You're cursing yourself. And that curse just followed you right out of childhood. And you had financial problems, you had relationship problems, you had health problems, you had everything in the world. Because you picked up a curse from trashing your folks. And you know what happened? Things did not go well with you. The reason you don't live long usually is because you got a curse on you. Almost everybody ends up physically ill or getting sick or getting a disease or something like that. What's the moral of the seminar? All these things that I just went down, you can repent of tonight. You can apologize to God tonight for. You can renounce in Jesus' holy name and we can break these curses off of you. You can apologize to God for things other family members did you can't ask God to forgive them because they have to do that themselves but you can apologize to God for what they did like that guy there his dad committed suicide they they were cursing and swearing all through the family father in the name of Jesus I apologize to you for what my family did lying cheating cursing killing raping pill whatever they did I am so sorry that was wrong they never acknowledged it was wrong but I'm going to because I know the truth. That's so why I apologize for you. I renounce that sin. I reject it. Any form of that sin that transferred to me, I'm repenting of it right this second. And I'm going to break that curse off of me and my family tonight. That didn't take long, did it? That was about 40 seconds. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I yelled at my mother because she was an idiot. She acted like a fool and she did this and that. And I realize now 
that you did not appoint me to be an auditor and a corrector of my mother and that that was a sin in your eyes when I read her the riot act and I repent of that and I renounce that evil right now I am sorry about that she's dead now I can't apologize to her but I will apologize to you I am sorry Lord for what I did I want this mother curse broken off of me in the name of Jesus Say I took what 40 seconds Notice that I'm not modeling right now. I mean you might pray a little differently, but I'm just trying to give you kind of an essence of it I'm apologizing to God for what I did to my mother even though they were wrong see Okay, let's uh, go ahead and pray and turn off the lights for a minute. Thank you, Jesus. All right, the, we'll stop right there. I'm, I apologize for taking so long. Let's pray it again. Father God, there's some uh, beautiful people here tonight, and they love you and they care about you, and they want they want your will in their lives. They truly do. But they know that there are curses on their life. They see the pattern in their family tree. Sicknesses, financial difficulties, health issues, broken relationships, divorces, patterns of crime, patterns of mental illness, patterns of depression. It's all there. They see it. I went over that and done the best I could tonight, Lord. But I'm asking you, since I can't help or heal anybody, I'm looking to Jesus now and the, I'm trusting the Holy Ghost to make this connection with whoever was listening to me tonight, particularly over YouTube. I love my YouTube friends. Just stand in front of your computer and I'll lead you through your deliverance. Father God, tonight, any person here who senses that they have a curse on their life, Need the ministry team to get together real quick, get ready to go. Any person here that has senses, they have family curses that came down the tree and either attacked you or your kids or your family or something like that. It's on top of you and you need a curse broken off. You just raise your hand so I can get an idea. There's, wow, there's a lot of, ooh, that's a lot of hands. So hold them up just a little bit longer. Ministry team, take a look in the crowd here real quick and see where the hands are, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Father God, I wasn't expecting that many people to raise their hands. So, sweet Holy Spirit, I know you're up to the task tonight. There's nothing you're not up to. There's nothing you can't do. You are strong. You are great. And we follow you, dear Lord. We follow you. Not ourselves so right now Lord we are going to do the repentance we have to do to break these family curses off these saints of God that raised their hand I asked earlier if everybody was saved and every no one raised their hand that wasn't saved so everybody in this room is a born-again Christian that means they are father your child you own these people they belong to you and the demons have these curses that came down from evil sinners in their family tree, grandparents, great-grandparents, parents, brothers and sisters, siblings, uncles, whatever it was. If it's a witchcraft curse and it came out of nowhere, tonight, Father God, I'm asking you to give each person the gift of forgiveness. And we're going to pray for that witch or warlock that put that curse on you and we're going to ask you to forgive them if they're not alive anymore. Father God, we're going to tell you right now, we're going to release them from our souls. We are going to forgive them whether they're alive or not. If they're alive, we're going to bless them and ask you to bless them. We're going to pray for them and ask you to help them and bless them. And we're going to completely forgive them and release them from our souls tonight and break that witchcraft curse right off. We'll break that curse right off. We're not going to ask you to curse anybody. We would never do that. Freely we have received and freely we give. We give grace and mercy and love because that's what we received 
from you was grace, mercy, and love. And so each person here tonight, Lord, I'm asking you to give them the gift of faith. I'm asking you to give them the gift of hate. Hatred for this curse. Hatred for the sin in their family tree. Hatred for the wickedness of their first and second and third and fourth generation. Whatever it was. Hatred not for the people, but for the sin. And those that are still alive who pass these curses down, we're going to pray and ask you to have mercy on their lives and save their souls. We're going to ask you to bless them. We're going to release all forms of unforgiveness and ought. And lastly, Lord, the most important one, each person in this room and listening on YouTube who cursed their parents and sassed them and talked back to them and rebelled against them and left them and stole from them and lied to you. Every addict in this room or watching me on YouTube, you're an addict. You lied to your parents. You stole stuff from them. You made up stories. You dishonored and you disgraced your family and your family tree. You are going to repent of that tonight. You are going to forgive. You are going to apologize to God for hurting your mother and father, even though they may have done several things, many things that were wrong. Doesn't matter. It's an unqualified issue. You must honor your parents, whether they're right or wrong. You must place value on their lives, even if you don't agree with them. You're going to repent of that tonight and get this mother and father curse broke off you. In Jesus' holy name. Now, those of you who raised your hand, just stand up for a second. Just the ones that raised their hand. You have some family curse on you right there. Some family curse there. Ready? All right, have the ministry team come up and stand by me if you don't mind. Come up here and help me. Just stand there, relax for a second, and close your eyes. Just totally relax. Totally relax. Take it easy. Take a big breath and relax. You saw the seminar and you're ready to repent. You're ready to change. And you're going to change right now. And if you don't, if you're not ready to change or repent, okay, you're not going to get delivered tonight. You're dismissed and you, you can leave. You can leave and the next time you come, I would love to see you again. And Then you'll be ready to repent and change. If you're ready tonight, stay, keep standing. Keep standing there. Okay, Close your eyes now. Just pray after me now. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I renounce every sin of my grandparents, my parents, my great-grandparents, every evil sin they committed. I apologize to you, Lord. I ask you to forgive them if they're alive. I repent for them if they're not alive. I acknowledge their sin and confess it. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Pray after me. Dear Jesus, I dishonored and degraded my parents. I didn't know it brought a curse on me. I lied to him. I disobeyed them. I mouthed off to him. I sassed them. I even cursed them and degraded them. I made fun of them. And when I did that, I grieved your soul. And I repent of it right at this moment. I ask for your forgiveness. I ask you to have mercy on me. I pray right now. That you will heal my parents if they're still alive. I plead you will heal their souls and remove the pain I gave them. Remove the demons I transferred into them. And the heartbreaking disappointments I caused them. God, forgive me for what I've done. Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. In the name of Jesus, I renounce this bastard curse on my life. Born out of wedlock, it no longer matters. My Heavenly Father has taken me up. I am no longer subject to this bastard curse. I repent in the name of Jesus of this curse of greed and money. 
being cheap with you being cheap with the poor hoarding I'll repent of it in Jesus name my life was to be a blessing to others not to chisel them and I'll repent of that wickedness and evil right this second I'll repent of it right now Father God I repent of sexual perversion curses adultery fornication pornography bestiality all forms of sexual wickedness incest I repent of all of it and I renounce this curse on my soul I renounce this sin of sexual perversion from my grandparents from my great grandparents from my parents and from me I repent of it I will never never open that door again in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus I repent of it I repent in Jesus holy name God forgive me I'm so sorry sweet Jesus help me God forgive me I'm so sorry come on now you pray now you pray now dear Lord help me dear Lord help me I repent of this and I command this curse to be broken off of me. I bind it in the name of Jesus. I command this thing to be broken. I bind this wickedness in the name of the Son of the Living God. And I command it, Spirit, in Jesus' name. I command curse in the Jesus' mighty name to come out of me right this second. Come out of my body right now. Evil, come out. Evil, come out. Wickedness, come out in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of the Lord. Right now, every demon from my mother, come out. Out in the name of the Lord. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. Drugs, the curse of drugs, come out. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Suicide. Suicide. Go help that guy, would you? Suicide. Come out in Jesus' name. Murder. Go in the name of the Lord. Come out. Come out. Right now. Spirit of whoredom. Spirit of adultery. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out. Wait a second. Come out. Get out of my body right this second. Witchcraft and sorcery. I bind your powers right now. Come out. I bind your powers right now. Come out. Come out. You bastard curse. Break off of me right now. Break off in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, ladies. Every demon I picked up. Sleeping with some demon infected man. I command him to come out of my body right now. I command those spirits, transfer spirits, to come out of me right this second. Come on out. Just repent of it. Let your tears go. Come on. Where's your godly sorrow? Let it go. Come on. Let go. In the name of Jesus Christ, come out. Body right now. Get out of there right now. Come out, you whore. Come out of that body right now. Go, you whore. Come out of that body right now. Come out, I said. Come out right now. Come out of that body right now. Get out of that body. Come out. Come out, you whore. Spirit of horn of I bind your power. Come out of there right now. Come on, ladies. I hate my husband. He drives me nuts. Just repent of it right now. Come on. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Come on, man. Come on. I hate my wife. I hate my ex-wife. Come on. Just repent of it. Come on. You hate your wife. Just repent of it right now. That's going to cost you your soul. It's going to cost you your soul. You hate your wife. Come on. Just repent of it. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Come out right now. Get out of that body right now. Come out there. Come out right now. Come out, I said. Come out of that body right now. Go. Get out of my brain. Stop overthinking spiritual things. I command you to stop it, spirit. Come out of his head. Go right now. Satan, come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, just repent of it. Don't stand there and do nothing. God forgive me. 
God forgive me. Come on, God forgive me. Let your tears go. Come on. Let your tears go. God forgive me. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Here he comes. Come out. Come out of your stomach. Come out. Church demons. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Here. Stop jerking here and come out. Come out right now. Come out of there. Come out of your throat. Come out of your throat now. Come out. Come out of there. Come out right now. Break off every curse. Break off. Come out. 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 Come out of there. Every ugly man that ever touched me, come out of me right now. Oh, my demons from my husband, come out. Come out right now. Come out. Every spirit, every spirit from my husband and my wife, my mother, my dad, I repent of it. Come out in the name of the Lord. Spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ. Cancer, tuberculosis, fibromyalgia, osteoarthritis. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Spirit of infirmity, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. All mind control demons If my people, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, you're not seeking him. Come on. Thus saith the Lord, then I will hear you from heaven. Then I will heal your land. Come on. Then, come on now, humble yourself. You're not going to humble yourself. You're not going to get healed. You have no chance of being healed if you do not humble yourself. Come on, just do it. Let this man of God go. Let go of her. Come out. Come out of her room. Come out of that room right now. Get out. Come out. Go now. If my people called by my name, if they will humble themselves, go ahead and do it. Just cry out to the Lord. Let's go. Do it. Try it. There you go. Good. Say it. Just cry out to him now. Come on. The Holy Ghost stand right funny. The Holy Ghost stand right funny. He's waiting for you to do something. Just do something. Do something. Come on now, pray harder. You're not doing anything. Come on. Oh my God. Not my dad, but my uh, What was his name? Oh, his name. Okay, ready? Take a breath and blow. Father God, this evil wickedness from Grandpa, come out. And these lost demons come out. There it is right now. Pray harder. Get out. Jesus Come out, you pervert. Get out. Get out. Come out, you pervert. Get out. Pray harder. Come on, sweetheart. Come on, sweetie. Dear Jesus, help me. There it is right there. Gigi, help me. Help me, Lord. There it is. There it is. That's him. He's coming on you right now. That's the Holy Ghost. Come on. There it is right there. That's the Holy Ghost. Pray harder. Pray harder. Pray harder. Come on. There it is. Keep coughing. There it comes right now. Come out, Spirit. Come out, Spirit. There it goes. Keep coughing. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Get out. Get out of my There it is. Keep coughing. Come out. Keep coughing. Go in Jesus' money name. Go in Jesus' money name. There you go. Cry out harder. Just like that. You're doing perfect. Try it again. Cry out harder. Lord Jesus, save me. Lord Jesus, save me. God, every ugly man that ever touched me. There he is. Keep it. There it's coming out right now. There they come. Come out. Come out right now. Do both of these. Come out right now. Come out. Come out, I said. Get out. Get out of here right now. Evil, come out. Evil. Come out. Come on. Play harder. Come on. Get him out of there. Pray harder. Pray harder. Go. Satan. Jesus, save me. Right, there you go. Good. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Pornography, come out of there. Come out of there. Drugs. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Drugs. Come out. 
come out. Evil, come out. Evil, come out. Get out of there. Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. Hurry up. Thank you. Hold that. Come out, hold that. Come out right now. Come out. Come out right now. Quicker. Come out quicker. Come out quicker, I said. Take a big breath and blow. Take a breath. Blow. Come out, spirit. Come out. Breathe out of your mouth. Come out, devil. Let go of his mind, you mind control spirit. Let go of his mind, you stinking devil. Mind control, I bind your power. Come out. Come out of there. Evil, come out. Hatred and anger, go. Self hatred, go. Come out right now. Come out right now. Hurry up. Hurry up. Let go. Let go. Get out of here. Come out. Get your mess out. Come out right now. Get him out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out, I said. Get out of that body right now. Let go of him. He has a call of God on his life. Spirit, let him go. There he is. Demon of fear. It's a fear spirit. Come out. Fear. Fear, go. Fear, go. Fear, go. Come out. Come out right now. Go. Fear. Come out. Shame. Hate. Hatred. Self-hatred, go. Get out of that body right now, you pig. Come out, you pig. Get out of that body. <laughs> Come out. Get out. Get out. Thus saith the Lord. Come out. Tell him to go. You evil spirit, come out of me. Say it. YouTubers, listen to me now. Just put your hand on your body. In the name of Jesus Christ. You put your hand on your body. There you go. Put your hand on your body. Put your hand on your body. No more satanic tattoos. Put your hand on your body, YouTube. Go. You must use your authority and you must fight back fast. You must fight back hard. You must repent fast. You must repent hard. Quicken this world. Get out of here right now. Come out right now. Go. There he is. Here he comes. Come out of there, you snake. Come out. Wolf demons. Get out of that body right now. Satan, loose your hold. Satan, I command you to loose your hold. I command you to loose your hold. Get out of my body right now. I told you to go. Come on, get out. Come out of my body right now. Come on. Do it. When you say that spirit that you told me about today, Lilith. 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 Yeah. You got her. Horse that came out of here tonight. Yeah. How am I going to know that she's out, though? All the symptoms, symptoms are gone. And the symptoms are gone. Okay. Can you pray for that right you now? Have symptoms. Have symptoms. Have symptoms. You have symptoms. I'm struggling with Lust. masturbation still, Dan. Yeah. yeah, come out of there. Get out of the body right now. I mean, in the name of Jesus. Relief. Relief. I Jesus, get out of me. Lust. Lust. Come out of here. You me. get out of me right now. Go. Yeah. Go now. Go. There it comes. Here it comes. Come out. Come out of that body right now. Get out. Oh, yeah. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out, I say, quicker. Get him out. Come out quicker. There he comes. Lust. Lust. Come out right now. There it comes. Go. Go. Get out of that body right now. Lord Jesus, help me. Help me, dear Lord. Help me. Say it. The Holy Ghost stand right in front of you. Come out of that. You sexual pervert. Come out of that body. Get out of there. Come out. Come out. Anger, rage and anger, go! Go, I said. Go! Go! Go now! Go now! Reach out with your faith. 
Peace out with your faith. This is a route. The Holy Ghost is routing this place. Come on. This is your chance. Fight back now. This is your chance. Come out of there. I refuse to tolerate you. Come out of me. Breathe. Come out. You heard him. That should do. There he goes. Go. 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 Come out. Jesus, come out of the body. I am coming. Out of that body right now. I am. You hear me? Go out, honey. Come out. Come out there. Come out quick. Come out quick. Come out quick. Come out there. Come out, buddy. Hurry up. Hurry up. How you doing tonight? What you need? Well, I've been praying against like uh, everything. <laughs> so yeah, everything. So my mother and my father. Everything. Yeah, no, my mother and my father. Every curse. What did they do to you? It's not what they did to me. What you do to them? I'm illegitimate. Uh huh. And so, but I'm not anymore because I'm the Lord. Right. And so. They're disconnected. They're so disconnected. From you? Yeah, they relate, but it's they don't not... Like, they don't like you? Probably not. They don't feel comfortable with you? Because I'm, like, in the Lord. And they're not. And did you ever apologize to them? Yes, I have. Did they receive it? On certain terms, yes. Okay. So yeah, but I can't, I can't control. Them. You have negative, any negative emotions about them? Um, not really. When I mean, you get around them, you have negative okay. emotions. My dad is believes that my sister is not his. He is making me take a paternity test so that I can tell her that she may not be his. And I'm angry about being forced against my will. Who forced you? He is. How? He's pressuring me to do it, so he bought it for me. How? Because he's making, I mean, I have to honor my dad, right? No. Okay. <laughs> yes, I Thanks did. for saying that. No, you don't. Okay, yeah. So now, I did it. Uh, oh, you already told, did it? I told him I'm not yeah. going to tell my sister. Okay. Uh, now, honoring your parents is not doing everything they tell you. Right. If they tell you to do something wrong, that's right. and you say no, that's not dishonoring yeah, your parents. That wasn't necessarily yeah. a sin. Yeah, Telling my sister, to me, I don't want to be involved in that. Exactly. Right. You knew it was wrong. You shouldn't have gotten involved in it. You should never have taken that test. Okay. okay? Right? Right. So, just repent of it. Okay. I do not do everything my parents tell me if it's wrong. And I'm angry now. And I must release it in the name of Jesus. How you doing? I just wanted to say goodbye for you. Are you leaving? Oh, yeah. love you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yes. Next time you come, give me some more notice oh, so I, I can see you. Okay. Oh no, I I need I had I got stuck in California. Is what happened? Oh, yeah, you gave me plenty of notice. Oh, Lord, no. So next time we'll do that. We'll do the same thing. No, it wasn't your fault. I got caught in California. I could have mentioned California. Oh, you were out there. Oh boy. I know. I was like, you kids, you did Thanks for coming. I love you. You did a good job, friend. Get all this anger out of my body right now in the name of Jesus. Anger brings curses. Got yeah, a girl. No anger. <laughs> pray for your sister. We followed you from California. Do you remember us? What's your need? Jessica. It was my dad's own name, Martha. What's your need? I'm Jessica. Yeah, Jessica. What's and your we need? We followed you. What's your need? I'm Jessica. What's wrong with you? I um. I have a problem with anger, and I, I, I for some reason can't be around my kids. When did that start? Anger. Well, when I left here, I was fine. <laughs> now, when did your anger first start in your life? When did it first start? 
How young were you? I've always been an angry little kid. And did somebody verbally abuse you when you were little? Who was that? My father. Was he critical of you? He was very, very. Um, I'm sorry, you said. Uh, what did? What word did he use? He was. He was, was he critical of you? Verbally critical? And was he? he humiliated us in public. What was his name? You met him over there. What's his, his name? name was One. One. Is he here now? No, One. Okay, close your eyes. The thing is, I'm getting paranoia. I know that's a fear demon. And I'm always scared. And I, I know. forgave him. And I already came with you. You yeah. know, you got delivered. No, he got back in. You ready? What's his name again? Oni. Oni. I'm scared. Take a big breath. They'll come right back out. Big breath. Breathe. Oni, your curse on your daughter is to be broken tonight. There it is. You come out of her in the name of Jesus. And fear demon, come up now. Come up right now, quickly. Come on up. Come on up. Let your tears go. Come out, spirit. Oni, come out of your daughter. Come out. Frustration and anger, go. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Demon of fear, I command you to come out of me. Go. <coughs> Spirit of fear, come out of me right now. Go. Go in Jesus' name. Come out. Go. Release my dad right now. Go. Come out of my body right now. In Jesus' holy name, come out. Go. In Jesus' holy name. Come out. Come out. Go. Come out. Come out. Got a girl. Come out right now. Here it comes. Go now. Get out of there. Come out. Right now. Get out of there. Hurry up. I forgive my dad and I let him go right now. I repent of being a coward. I command cowardice come out of me. I command Good. Come out. Come out. Go. Get out of there. Get out of there. Get him out right now. Get the rest of them out. You let them back in. Now get him out. There they go. Come out right now. Come out of there. Come out. Go. Come out. Come out. I repent, Lord. Come out. Come out. Every demon from that kid, come out of me right now. Come out. Go. Go. Every one of them. Come out right now. Get out of my body. Go. Get out of my body. Go. Right now. Go. Now go. Come out. Come out. You speak in tongues? Go ahead. Good. Louder, please. Louder. Louder. Let's go. Good. Louder. 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 Olava Shatra Shitre Moma. What do you want the Lord to do for you? Okay, that's easy. Raise your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Keep fighting, guys. Keep fighting. Come out. Keep fighting. Yeah. Come over here. You let the demons from that kid go right now. Ready? Come on. Just repent of it. All those, all those spirits from that guy. Go. Come on. Repent of it. Up and up. Repent of it. Up and up. Hey, when you're done over here, can you help that guy? You won't forgive himself. Right there. Yeah. Come out right now. Go right now. Right now. What's your need? About a year and a half ago, my right ear went down. About five years ago, my sis, little sister's right ear went down. About 15, 20 years ago, my mom's right ear went down. Oh, this ear here is fine. 
All now, the doctors say, but, uh, what was your, what happened to your mother? Go back to that one. How did, was she sinning, doing something? Was she witchcrafting anything? No. Come out. She, she was in a religion, our original religion was called was the it? truth, which is kind of a cult. Druids? What? It's called the truth. The truth? Yeah, they think, they Go. believe they're following it. But it's kind of a cult type thing. You either follow or you get out. Yeah, I never heard of that one. And then after that, she went deaf in that ear? After that, she went deaf in this ear? No, she's been in it her whole life. Oh, she's been in it her whole life? Yeah. And then how old was she when she went deaf? Uh, she's 94 now, so it was around 70, 74. Oh, she didn't go deaf till she was 74? Okay, and then who went deaf after that? My little sister, about five years ago. And what religion was she in? Same. But she kind Truth? Of, she kind of fell away from it. Were you ever in it? I was for a while, and then we realized what was going on and left it. Okay, that's probably it. You got familiar spirits from that cult. Click, click, click. That could be it. Go ahead and repent of it. Come on now, pray hard. <laughs> How are you? What you need? I'm Terry. Terry, Mike. You you, res you responded to my email. Thank you so much. Oh, I think the one thing that's been going on in my life, Mike, is is a, a pattern of poverty and calamity. When that start? Um, probably about two years ago. Two years ago? About Did anybody years else ago. in your family have that? On my mom's side, yes. On your mom's side? My mom's side of the family. Oh, what's your mom's name? Her name is Charlene. What religion was she? She's a, she's a born-again Christian. When you were young? Yes. And her dad? Uh, yes. Christian. Is he poor? Yeah. To, well, to the best of my knowledge. But he died when I was like four or five. My grandpa died. But he was poor. <laughs> when he I was, was, he four, was when poor. When I was four, he Both died. grandpa died, died poor? Yes. And how about his dad? Probably. Come out. Yep. Yes. Okay. That it must be back, it. It goes way back in my mom's side of the family. Mother's side and then... My dad's Drew, side dad, was, her grand, her dad's side or her mom's side. My dad side? was successful, but his parents were uh, alcoholics and oh. big mess. What was his name? So my dad's name is Grady, and the, and his, his dad was. Uh, well, they called him Toad. Toad, kind of like a yeah, like a nickname. All right, so, let's try yeah. that. Ready? Raise your hands. <laughs> Father God, in the name of Jesus, I got the man of God standing here. And he's got a curse on his life, and it has caused nothing but heartache and misery. It has hurt him so bad, it's hurt him in the heart. It's hurt him in his soul. There's nothing sadder or sicker than not having enough money to pay your bills and worrying about your future financially. It causes nothing but pain, heartache, and stress. But Father God, it's hurt his soul and it's hurt his spirituality with the Holy Ghost. It's hurt his relationship with you. Yes, he's hurt. And this thing started with great grandpa. Toad. The toad. The toad spirit of poverty. You come out of that body right now. Louder. There you go. Louder. Break off. Break off. The toad. The toad. Break off right now. The toad. Break off right now. Break off. Break off. Break off. Can you speak in tongues? Loud. Go. Louder. Louder. What you need, honey? Carol. Carol, Mike. Carol. Nice to meet you. What you need tonight? Um, well, I know that I have a Freemason curse, and oh. I know that I have. Um, I mean, I've already done all this, like breaking stuff. What's the symptoms left? <clears throat> What's still left well, that's bad? 
Okay, well, I do have a total lack of love. I don't get love in every circumstance. You mean you don't, don't give it or you don't no, receive it? No, I don't it. receive it. You have love? Just for them, love. but they don't reciprocate. I don't and, was, and who in your family was like that? Who in your family was like that? Both my parents. They were giving you love, but they no, didn't receive it? No, they, they don't give love. They don't receive it. They don't give any love. Oh, they don't give love. No. Um, we, I've done it to me before. I have like five little people from, you know, where multiple things. And so I've you mean been, personalities? You have <laughs> DID? Well... I've, I've worked on it for a long time, but every once in a while, I'll, I'll find it, you know. What personality is this right now I'm talking about? It's just me. It's me. That's you? It's me. And uh, what's the other personality? It's like five little children. It's like... Um, what's the first children? The first, well, the main one is a little girl. I don't know her name, but she's, she wets her pants. And she's always... Get, she's molested from three years old to eight years old. Were you ever molested? I don't recall being molested, but I know I was molested because once I start... Realizing it, and all the memory comes back of it. And my children were molested by the same person. Who? My dad. Did your dad molest your kids? Do they remember it? Yeah. So it actually happened. It actually happened. Okay. But did anybody in your family? Did he do it to anybody when you were young that you know of for sure? Um, I know of that the only person that could have molested my niece was my dad because he was the only person in the house. And I know that um, my sister was molested and he was the only person in the house. What are you doing? You feel something? <coughs> what is your shoulder hurt? Your children hurt? Are they hurting now? This one, I don't know. Like Jesus. Is it hurting right this second? Feel it. Move it around. Does that hurt? Okay. Okay, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Hold on a second. Don't do it. Father God, we're going to break this curse off this man of God tonight. In Jesus' name, so he can be healed. In the name of the Lord. Heal. <clears throat> Anything? Oh, it's tight. Okay, Lord, tell him why that's still tight. That should have healed up just like that. Just tell it, put that thought in his mind. What's the name of that kid, girl that cries? I never get her name. I try to get her name, but last time, last time I got to, I hate to say it the way I know it sounds weird. You what? I know it sounds weird. You but, did what? Um, she, I was trying to understand that I remember seeing my dad crying and I asked Holy Spirit to please explain to that because I needed it. But anyway, she, she pees her pants. That's about how I see it all the time. No, so she pees her pants she's because she's scared. She's, scared. she's yes. afraid. Yes. Okay. Now just close your eyes. Relax. Okay. Just relax, okay? Okay. Father God, in the name of Jesus. This little girl in there is fake. She is not real. She does not belong in this woman of God. It's a fake personality. She pees her pants because she's afraid she wants attention. Well, tonight she's getting no attention. In fact, she's not staying in there. Open your mouth. <coughs> Come out of there, you fake altar. The baby who pees her pants, I know you're listening to me. You do not belong in there. And you come out now. Come out right now. She commands you to come out right now. Fake personality, you're not real. Come out of there. Right this second, go. Come out right now, go. Come out right now, go.
Come out right now, go. Come out. Come out, I said. She's telling you to come out. We don't care about your name. We don't care who you are. We don't care anything about you. Just get out right now. Just leave. Take a breath and blow. Come out right now. Fake personalities. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Only one personality belongs in here. Child abuse in the name of Jesus. We forgive her dad and we bless him. We pray for him and we place the blood of Jesus over him. And we ask you to forgive him and heal him. We renounce his wickedness and his evil and his sins. And we command her dad to leave her right now. Release my father and all the abuse I had as a kid. I release it right now. All the abuse of my sister. I release that right now. I let it go in the name of Jesus. Right the second. I'm leaving it go. Right now. Leaving it go. Come out of me. I let my dad go. Everything about him. I have a heavenly father. I don't need a dad. Come out right now. Come out of there. Come out. Leave. Daddy, I love you, but you must go now. It's time. Everything about you, all your spirits, all the soul wounds, all my hurts, everything you caused me, I forgive you, I love you, now, but you must now go. Come out of me right this second. Come out right now. Come out. Go. Just scream at that demon in your mind, not out loud, in your mind, just scream at him. Get out now. Get out now. Satan, I command you to get out now. Put your hand right there. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her right now in Jesus' name. That's too weak. Come on. That's too weak. Come in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of the head. Yes. Come out. Come out. Come out. Get out of the head, Jesus. Get out of there. Burn you out with the Holy Ghost. I burn Go. Fire. Come out. Fire from head to toe. Fire up the head. Fire Come out. The head. Get out of the head, Jesus Christ. I want my dad head. gone right now. Get out of the head. Mind control. No, I give yeah, you. Give her to you, Lord. Lord. I give him to you. Name of Jesus. Get out of the head. Name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let go. Go. Joe, come out. Joe, come out right now. Joe, that's fake. Come out right now. Come out. A fake altar in the name of Jesus. I command you to come out right this second. That is not me. That is not my personality. I have nothing to do with Joe. He's fake. Come out now, I said. Right now. Come on, just get mad. Come on, get mad. You're too passive. Get out. Joe, I command you to come out. Come out. Get out with Jesus. Spirit of Joe. Joe, come out right now. Come on. Come on. Fight right now. We thank you for your healing power right now. What's going on with this girl? What's up with her? Thank you, Lord. What's the diagnosis? Her back. We diagnosed her with de deteriorating dis disease in her back. But um, they're also testing her. It might be her muscles. Her muscles are now, when did that start? Um, you're healing that back and restoring back to her bone her bone and matter Lord God she's a teenager and who heard her when she was young um she got molested or beat up no probably me I'm her mother you're her mother what would happen to her when she was young somebody heard her me and her father. Probably. What'd you do to her? How's that feel? I was abusive to her. Verbally or physically or sexually? Yeah, um, ver verbally abusive to her. Were you her. critical of her? No. How were you verbally abusive to her? Just, um, How's your hips? Cussing, yelling. And At her? Huh? Yeah. Saying were you hard on her? No more I was pain very hard on her. What's your name? I'm on my kids. Connie. Connie. Yes. Oh, nice to meet you. Is it a dolphin? Hey, you're your mother, Connie. But was she a verbally abusive to you when you were young? Take her over there. Oh, yeah. We prayed. Was your mother verbally abusive to you when you were young? Did she ever apologize to you? 
Wh when was that? She's apologized several times over the years. Oh, she has? Okay. Did you ever get your mother's spirits out of you? Huh? We prayed for mom earlier to get out. Did you ever get them out? Did they come out? I felt them leave, but I, huh? she didn't like match us or anything like that. You didn't? Other than your mother, did your dad also verbally abuse you? No, he just wasn't there, period. Oh, he was absent? <clears throat> Was your mother a huggy, affectionate person when you were young, or was she more kind of reserved, emotionally off? And then, uh, are you married? No, Have you been I, married? I messaged you earlier about my husband. Um, he's, your ex-husband? He's, he's divorcing me, yeah. Oh, he's leaving you? Is, was he uh, standoffish as well? Um, or was he a huggy, affectionate, kissy type? He was. He was affectionate? Okay, and why is he divorcing you? Because of my addiction to pills. Addiction to what? My addiction to pills. What kind of pills are you on? I was on um, whatever I could take. Oxycontin. What are you taking this week? Nothing. Well, oh, nothing? Well, just galloping. Okay. Well, now here, here's the problem. When did you start taking pills? What age? I started taking pills when I was like 16. Okay. Now here's what happened. Your soul has got cuts in it, wounds, from your dad abandoned you and your mother abused you. And you've had these wounds since you were little. And the spirits told you to take pills to compensate for it or kind of escape from it or to feel better and so that's what's wrong you got soul wounds from from the mother and the dad he he left her okay so what you do you just raise your hands or close your eyes now Lord Jesus I need you to forgive me tonight because I have to repent I've been taking pills drugs, letting spirits in my body, masking pain of my mom and dad because they failed me when I was young and they disappointed me and they hurt me. And I never recovered because I started to self-medicate. I did everything the devil told me to do. And I'm so sorry for that. And I'll repent in the name of Jesus of taking pills right now. Because every time I did, I hurt you. I hurt your feelings. Because unlike my natural dad, my Heavenly Father, you have never left me for one minute. You would never walk off and abandon me. You would never leave me alone. And you're the only male I've ever known who truly loved me. My dad left me and now my husband's leaving me. And I need these wounds. The new ones from my husband, the old ones from my mom and dad. I need these wounds off my soul tonight. Come on, let your tears go. Let them go. Come on, let it go. I need to repent of taking these pills. That's a horrible sin. Come out, self-hatred, self-pity, self-disgust, yes, come out of me, come out, you filthy pit. You filthy pills, come out of me right now, come out of my stomach, come out of my womb. All my husband's demons, come out right now, come out of me right now. The disappointment, the heartache. The sadness, the fear of my future. Come out of me right now. Come out of there. There it is. Yes, you say yes. Come out, spirit. Spirit, you don't say no, you say yes. Come out of her. Come out. I repent of taking these pills and ruining my marriage, and ruining my soul, and ruining my life. I repent of it. Right now, I repent of it. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. Dad, I forgive you and I release you to the Lord. Mother, I, I love you and I forgive you and I release you to God. I release you to the Lord. I let my husband go right now. He's yours, Lord. 
He's yours. All these wounds and all this pain. Come out of me. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Come out of me. Hold that. Hold that. Come out of me right now. Come out of there. Come out of there, you pill popper. Come out of right there. Come out. Come on. I hate taking pills. I hate taking pills. I know it's wrong. I know it's hurting my Heavenly Father. I repent of it right this second. I repent of it right now, I said. Come out of me. Say it. Father, I'm so sorry I hurt you. I command this addiction to come out of me right this second. Hurry up. How you doing? Oh, oh, uh, what's going I was, on? Uh, I was. Did you hear any voices in your head when I was teaching? No, um, I forgot his name, but he was praying for me before the teaching. He kind of dealt with that, mm -hmm. but he had encouraged me to have voices you. Voices gone. Yeah, he. Well, he encouraged me to have you uh, to ask you to lay hands on me and, and ask did you more of the power of the Spirit of God. Do you do you speak in tongues? Yeah. Okay, come on over here. And how come you're so thin? Um, well, it's been hard to eat because it, it's like a, a breathing disorder seems when it comes so I eat small portions oh, Okay, now you don't have a breathing disorder. That's all fake just like those voices in your head They're all fake. They're coming from demons. There's no nothing wrong with you. He's in there doing that There's nothing wrong with you. He's doing it breathing disorder <laughs> That's ridiculous that's absurd. Take a big breath. You stinking spirit. Breathe. Blow. Blow again. You filthy spirit. Wait, where are you going? Stay over there. Stay over there. Get that rest of that thing out. Hurry up. Come out of there right now. Take a big breath and breathe. Come out and breathe. Come out and breathe. Come out and breathe. Breathe. Keep breathing. Keep going. Big breath. You rotten devil. I'm going to give you three seconds. There's nothing wrong with him. You're hiding in his lungs. This whole thing's a lie. It's a pack of lies. That's all this stuff is. Voices in his head. Those are lies. Pain in his chest. He can't eat. That's all lies. Let me give you three uh, seconds. The doctors gave me a breathing test, and my uh, breathing was abnormally shallow. Yeah, the so. demons are doing that. There's nothing wrong. I mean, the doctors don't know what they're talking about. They don't know anything about demons. You do. You're smarter than they are. No one. In Jesus' holy name, I command this thing to come out of my lungs at the count of three. You get out of there right now. One, come out. Two, and three. Come out. Come out. There you go. Get him out. Get it. Go out. Go out. Out of my lungs. Come out. Out of my breathing. There you go. I don't have anything wrong with my lungs. Thank you, Jesus. The blood of Jesus covers every sin. And if I don't believe that, I'm saying that the blood of Jesus is deficient. Of course it isn't. The blood of Jesus forgives any sin. And I receive it right now. Say it. I receive it, Lord. Say that. Thank you, Jesus. I receive the Holy Ghost. Say it. Get out of my body right now. I said, come out right now. Get out of my throat. Hurry up. I'm not sick. Get, I love you, Lord. Bless me now. There you go. Good. Bilova. Repeat after me. Bilova. Koya Shanda. Bekosi. Anuma. Gandapa. Bole. Alu. Shopasha. Kelosita. Megova. Notice how easily you repeat that. Okay, now you repeat it after me. I'm going to add some syllables on your own. Ready? Kolasheve. Valo. Dandaramo. Rabo. Any syllable. Oravasha. Hello. There it is. Ondamashambarashite. Kelova. Torabashandarabava. Olavi. Melolasha. Any syllable. There you go. Say it. Oramashandoravoshite. Baba. Hey, can you help those guys get his tongues going? Ola Shaba. Just repeat after Ron. Kola Shite. Get out of my chest. I told you. Come out of there right now. I hate your guts. I'm not sick. That's a lie. I'm not mentally ill. That's a lie. The whole thing's a pack of lies. It's all a pack of lies. Get out of my body. 
You get out of there. This time I'm not letting them all back in. I repent of this in the name of Jesus. Right now. Come out of there. Come out. What's going on over here? <laughs> you need something? You need anything? How you doing? I'm doing fine. I just come out of there. What's your, what's your name? Javier. Javier, Mike. Nice, right. nice meeting you. What do you need? Uh, come out. <laughs> what's wrong with you? Hey, what's wrong with him? What's wrong with Javier? Addicted to heroin. He's on heroin. Okay, when you was a kid, did somebody hurt you real bad? <coughs> when you were little. <coughs> Come out of that body right now. Come out. Did somebody hurt you about when you were a little kid? When I was a kid, I don't remember anything about when you were a kid. Okay. Were you abused when you were a young man? Young man, I guess. Did something bad happen to you? What happened? Did you get beat up or raped or anything like that? Just a uh, relationship with uh, a satanic girl. A girl? What was her name? Angelica. What? Angelica. Angelica? That was her name, and you had a relationship with her? Were you having intercourse with her? Yeah. Well, how long did you date Helica? Two years. Two years? Oh, man. Raise your hands. And just repeat after me Dear Lord Jesus. I am so incredibly sorry. I am so sorry I hurt you. I committed adultery. I dated a woman who was loaded with demons. And they transferred into me. And now I'm a heroin addict. I throw myself at your mercy, Lord Jesus. I beg you to forgive me and to save me. I'm so sorry. So sorry for my sin. Drugs, anger, violence, self-hatred, hatred for others, low self-esteem, hopelessness. I'm so sorry. Holy Spirit, I pray you will come to me now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, Holy Ghost, come to me now. Come to me now. Come to him now. now. Holy Spirit, come in. Come in. Holy Spirit, come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Hey, this guy's a load in the demons. He's sick. Okay. Are, you, you, are you engaged to him? Yeah. Have you slept with him yet? We have two kids. You have two kids? Come out. Okay. Stand up here then. Come on. Ask him to forgive you. Stand right here. Stand right. What's your name? Leah. Leah. Okay. Close your eyes. Father God, I got Leah standing here. And she has made some incredible bad choices. She started dating and fell in love with a man loaded with demons. He used to date a satanic witch. And then we had two children, and they are on the menu from Satan. He wants the kids now. Father God, I must repent tonight in the name of Jesus for what I have done. Dating somebody I should have never even shaken hands with. Sleeping with somebody who had spirits who used to date a satanic witch. Father God, I'm so sorry I hurt you. I'm so sorry I hurt you, Lord, and I'm asking you to forgive me right now, oh God.
forgive me, dear Jesus. Forgive me, Lord, for what I've done. I put my children in Satan's crosshairs. Now, my heart is grieved and heavy over my fiance because he can't get healed and he's an addict. And if I marry him, I will have a life of misery. And I already know that. And so tonight, Lord, I must be set free first. In the name of Jesus, every evil spirit from every man who was ever with, every ugly man that ever touched my body, I want them all gone, including my fiance. I want them placed in your loving hands, Lord. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Okay, take a breath and blow. Keep going. Blow. Come out. Keep blowing. Come out. Every spirit from my husband. Come up right now. Come out of there. Keep blowing. Come out, buddy. Out. Every satanic witch. Come out. Every demon of heroin in my body. Come out. Right now. Every spirit from my fiance come out of me right now I command all this evil to come out of me I command serial adultery to come out fornication there it comes keep coughing here he comes come out fornication come out there it comes there it comes keep coughing come out come out go Jesus come out right now every day for my husband come out now go come out now go Come on, sweet Jesus, have mercy on my soul. Say it. Have mercy on me. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of her. Come out of her right now. Come out of there. Come out right now in Jesus' holy name. Come out right now. Come out right now. Put your hand right here. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every spirit to come out of her. Come out. Come out right now. Every unclean spirit. Evil and wickedness. Come out of me right now. Evil. Come out of my soul. Come out of my lungs. Evil and wickedness. Marijuana. Heroin. Drugs. Coke. Come out. Wickedness and evil. Self-hatred and anger. Come out right now. There he is. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Come out. Come out of there. Here he comes. Come out. Come out of there, you monster. Come out. Go now. Get out of there, buddy. Come out. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out. Evil. Wicked. Evil. Come out. Anger and hatred and murder. Get out of there. Hatred and anger and murder. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Come out, you monster. Come out. Drugs, heroin, go in the name of Jesus. Heroin, come out. Evil, go. Demons from hell, go. Hatred, go. Get out. Come out. Come out. Go. Come out. Get out right now. Go. Come out. Go. Go. Stand right here. Satan, in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of this man of God. Come out right now. Come out. Get out of there, you monster. Come out. Out in the name of Jesus. Go, spirit. Go. This guy here? Yeah, Nick. That's right Nick. Now. Yeah, yeah the Nick right guy. Now. No, no, Nick. But he's in there casting out. Yeah, I told him to. I told him not to touch her. Come out. Come out right now. Go. Say it. Come out. Go. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Go. Every man. Adultery. Fornication. Witchcraft. Go. Come out. Don't touch him. Come out right now. Get out of that body. You monster. Come out, I said. Come out, I said. Get out of there. Come out. Go. Satan out. 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 
Satan, loose your hold. Go now. Go. Come out. Wickedness and evil. Evil. Wickedness. Come out. Heroin. Drugs. Rejection. Drugs. Spirit of drug. Come out. Drugs. Come out. Drugs. Come out. Go. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there. Go. Let her go. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Evil. Drugs. Curses. Bad men. Go. 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 Out. Come out, you spirit. Come out, you spirit. Get out of there. Come out. Got a heroin addict. Put your hand right here. Satan, I command you to come out in Jesus' name. Say it. command you to come out. Get out of there. Amen. 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 Get out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. All spirits of shame, guilt, come out right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Get out. Get out. All spirits of shame. Amen. Come on, sweetheart. Fight harder. Monster, come out of her. Monster, come out. Come out of there, you ugly, evil, you adultering, fornicating, lustful monster. He loves you. He loves you. How'd that go? It went well. Well, how'd you do? Okay. I got a whole list of things that my family suicide, witchcraft, all kinds of stuff. Now, do you have any? Are they still alive? Uh, are they alive? No. Are they all dead? Uh, family, are they alive? No. Are they? No. Are they dead? The ones who committed suicide are dead. The oh, the other ones. They're dead. Dead. Who else? Uh, are they dead? Uh, are they alive or dead? Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Most of them are dead. Okay. Now, uh, do you have any negative emotions or feelings for any of them? No, except for um, I have fear of my aunt uh, Shirley threw herself in front of a train. Aunt Shirley, and that causes what feeling? Fear. 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 fear yeah. Okay. Raise your hands, Lord Jesus. I ask you to forgive me right now for listening to fear demons. Forgive me right now. It's all a lie, <laughs> and I'm supposed to listen to you and not evil spirits. And I command my aunt's fear demon to come out of me right now, right now, come out. Come out. Come out. Get out of my head. Get out of my head. Right this second. Go. Go. Right this second. Go. Come out right now. What was her name again? Shirley. Come on, Shirley. Come out of her. Shirley. Take a breath and blow. Shirley, come out. Shirley, come out. Keep blowing. Shirley, demon of fear, come out. Come out right now. Come out, you spirit of fear. Shirley, come out of there right this second. Come out of my womb, come out of my stomach, come out of my breast, come out of my throat. Right now, quickly, 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 come out. In the name of Jesus Christ, come out. Shirley, come out of there. Train, the train, come out. The nightmares of the train, come out. The engine, the roaring, come out. Death, come out. Get out of that body right now, hurry up. Come out. Do not take your time. keep coughing. Come out. Shirley, come out. Demon of fear. Fear of trains. 
No, in Jesus' holy name. Get out of there. Evil and wickedness. I command you to come out of the man of God. Heroin, come out. Drugs. Rage and anger. I said, come out of me. You have no place. No, don't you tell me no, devil. You tell me yes. Don't you tell me no. You tell me yes. Get out. Get out. Yes. Keep coughing. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up, you poor. You pervert. Every pervert out of me. Come out. Keep coughing. Come out. There it goes. There comes Shirley. Come out, Shirley. Fear from Shirley. Trains from Shirley. There it goes. Go. Come out. <laughs> Drugs! Drugs! Get out of that body! Get out, Shirley! Come out! Come out, Shirley! Hurry up! Come out of my vagina right this second! Come out of there! Come out of my womb! Come out of my children! Demons! Come out of my kids! Come out of my kids! Shirley, come out! Come out, Shirley! Get out of there, you psycho! Come out of there, you psycho! Get out! Get out, psycho! Come out of there! Fear! Demon of death, go! Death! Death! Come out! Death, come out! Come out of there! Come out of there, you pervert! Get out of my kidneys! There he is! Get out of my kidneys! Come out of my liver right now! Get out! Go now! Pervert, come out! Hurry up! Shirley, come out right now! <coughs> Come out, Shirley. Hurry up. Go now. Quickly. Quicker. Demon of fear from Shirley. Come out. Go. Come out faster. Think of spirit. Go. I want my husband's demons out of my body right now. Every one of them. Get out of there right now. Get out. Come out of that body. I want my husband gone now. All of my husband's demons. Go. Heroin demons, come out. Come out, heroin. Get out of that body right now. Come out right now. Hurry up. Hurry up. There she comes. Come out. Shirley, come out. Shirley, death. Trains. Being ground up by a train. Come out. Suicide. Demon of suicide. Come out. Come out of the family tree. Suicide, go. Go now. Come out, you monster. Come out of that body right now. Evil, come out of there. Hurry up. Go. Get out of there. Every suicide in my family tree, I command you to come out of me now. Come out. Every person that died and went to hell, come out of me right now. Go. Come out. The sorrows of hell, come out of me. The sorrows of hell, go! Get out. Come out! <laughs> Hopelessness! Hopelessness, go! Go! Go and be healed! Go and be healed! In the name of Jesus, I command oral sex to come out of my mouth. Go! Come out of my mouth! Come out of my mouth right now! Go! Oral sex, come out! Anal sex, come out! Hurry up! Come out of my body! Come out! Oral sex, come out of me right now, I said. Come out, you spirit of perversion. Come out, you pervert. There he comes. You get out of that body right now. <coughs> Satan, I command you to come out of my wife right this second. Satan, get out of Satan, I, I command you to come out of my wife right now. Go in Jesus' holy name. Go out. Get out of me. Suicide, come. Suicide, go. There it goes. Here he comes. Suicide, go. Here he comes. Suicide, go. Amen. Here it comes. Get out. There he comes. Get out. Glory to God. Get out. Glory to God. Get out. Glory to God. Come out of there. Go. Come out. Come out of there, you monster. Evil and wickedness. Come out of me. The sorrows of hell. Come out of me right now. Depression. Go. Get out. Depression, go. Low self-esteem, go. Sadness, go. Malnutrition, go. Drugs, go. You get out of that body right this second, you stinking pervert. What are you doing? You're stalling again. Come out of that body right now. Come out of her breasts. Come out of her breasts right now. Get out of there. Come out. Come out of her hands. Come out of her hands right now. Go. Come out of there. There it comes. Out of her hands. Out of her hands. 
out of her feet. Go. Get out of there. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come out of there, you rapist. Get out right now. Come out of her womb. Come out of her vagina. Hurry up. Get out of that womb right now. Her husband commands you to come out, and that's it. Now come out. Go now. Go. Get out. Come on, son. Tell the demons to come out. You tell them. Get out of my body.